Carlin will be Jess Atkinson, who, among other things, is the ACC record holder in terms of consecutive extra points. He has made 71 in a row. Again, the weather conditions, beautiful. Bright blue sky, temperature in the low 60s, it's breezy. And the kick with the wind in his back goes out of the end zone. So North Carolina will take over first and 10 at its own 20-yard line, and they have Scott Stan Cabbage, who has taken over for Rod Elkins this year, the quarterback. Elkins graduating. Eddie Colson is the fullback. And then you've got Tyrone Anthony, and of course, we will also see quite a bit of Ethan Horton today as they alternate a tailback. Mark Smith is one wide out, and Earl Winfield out of Dinwiddie, Virginia, is the other. Good balanced attack in Carolina, as we mentioned during the scene set. We'll find out just how good they are today. They come in 7-0. and And they start by giving it to the tailback. Number 8, Tyrone Anthony, who picks up about 8. To the 28-yard line. Up front, Brian Blados checks in at about 300 pounds. Greg Naren is the left guard. He's 261. Bart in the center is 255. Austin is 262. And Conwell, the right tackle, is 268. So they have some big people up front along with Franklin, the tight end, at 238. Big people opening up the holes for Horton and Anthony. Anthony is the tailback in the eye on second down. Call it two and a half. And they give it to the fullback. It's Colson who is shy of the first down by less than one. Third and very short yardage coming up. Jimmy Joyce making the tackle. The Maryland defense, Cox, Furman, Thompson, Joyce up front. The backers, Gross, Baker, Wilson, and DePaul. Eric Wilson was the defensive player of the week in the conference last week with Jones, Baldwin, and Krause in the secondary. Dick Crump, who has done a great job at North Carolina, formerly coached at Miami of Ohio, a quiet man who has been tremendously effective. And a first down for Anthony as he carries through the middle. So North Carolina, very basic at the outset, first and 10 to the 32. They are pretty much of a typical I-formation team, very quarterback, tailback oriented. We talked about that tailback tandem at the top of the show. And, uh, you know, Al, over the last decade, along with USC, they have probably been about the best tailback team in America. Ten straight years of 1,000-yard uh, tailback uh, uh, producers. And yet, most of the publicity, of course, goes to the SC backs because they keep winning Heismans. That is Smith, who had lined up in the backfield going in motion. Stan Cabbage on a roll to his right, throwing out to the 36, but it's incomplete. It was short hop by Winfield, number 21. Totally second down. Short hop? Well, you just finished the World Series. What, what can I expect, you know? And in this area, too, they remember it finally, don't they? A lot Indeed. of Baltimore Oriole yep. hats in the stands today. But Scott Stan Cabbage is a fellow who has been a reserve up until this year, but uh, Elkins was hurt a lot during his career, so Scott saw a lot more action than your basic number two quarterback over the past three seasons. Well, we mentioned it uh, previously. In terms of passing efficiency, he ranks third nationally, and he is indeed a very high percentage passer. Second and ten, and he gets out to the 36-yard line. It picks up four. Jimmy Joyce, number 99, a senior from Gaithersburg, Maryland, makes his second tackle of the game. That's what they do best. Uh, all of the base plays out of the I formation, student body right, student body left, the blast or isolation play, and they use a lot of misdirection in which they'll fake to the fullback going one way and feed to the tailback going the other. And the passes that Stan Cabbage will throw will be mostly, first of all, the high percentage passes. Third down and six, Carolina from the 36-yard line. And Stan Cabbage sends everybody out into the pattern and incomplete at the 41-yard line, in and out of the hands of Dave Truitt. The tight end, number 82, he was wrapped up by Eric Wilson. We'll have another look at it. Carolina will punt. Dave Truitt, number 82, is on the right, and he's running an out route. And he normally has very sure hands. Of the two tight ends, he is the one between he and Franklin who they consider to be the most sure-handed. That time he dropped it. Fumble! And Maryland has it at the 25-yard line. It is Bob Gunderman who makes the recovery, number 29. 
after the drop by Tommy Barnhart, the punter. Gunderman was the kid who was on his way to the Aloha Bowl in Hawaii last year and wound up in Caracas. We'll elaborate later. Watch the play again. I want to hear that story. There's the fumble, and there's Gunderman, number 29, on top of it. An immediate field position right now for the Turks. So a bad snap cost him. And Maryland has it inside the North Carolina 25-yard line. First and 10 with Boomer Esiason, the left-handed quarterback, turning and getting it to Willie Joyner. And Joyner moves inside the 20 for the 19-yard line. He's stuck there by Jeff Blaylock, number 40. We just talked about the misdirection plays for North Carolina. Maryland also features those. Tell the Gunderman story real quick, Al, will you? Gunderman last year was hurt. The team was leaving for Hawaii on a charter out of Baltimore through Los Angeles to Honolulu. But he was he was injured in a freak accident. Called coach Bobby Ross. Ross said, well, we'll send you a ticket. You'll get over there tomorrow. As Esiason rolls to his left and throws and incomplete. Russell Davis was skirting the sideline. Esiason throwing toward the corner. As you look at Maryland, Boomer Esiason is the quarterback, joiner, one running back out of Brooklyn. Madonic is the fullback. Gaddio, who is their number one fullback, has a separated shoulder. Greg Hill, one wide out. And Russ Davis is the other. Anyway, to finish on Gunderman, he winds up on a plane going out of New York. He thinks it's going toward Honolulu, through L.A. He finds out it's going to Caracas. That's where he went, landed. He lands in Venezuela and eventually makes it to Honolulu with the close to terminal jet lag that he got into the game. <laughs> but Donick gets inside the 15 to the 12-yard line. And a first down for Maryland. Offensively, Baraka, Salt is an Outland Trophy candidate. Glover is the center. Sean Benson out of Altoona, Pennsylvania. Venetia, the right tackle from Norristown, PA. Tommy Lasorda is hometown, and Bill Rogers is the tight end. First down, Maryland at the North Carolina 12-yard line. Joyner is the tailback. Madonic is the fullback. That's Davis in motion, and it's Joyner to the short side of the field. And he gets inside the 10 to the 7-yard line where Bill Shepard, number 23, makes the tackle. Defensively, for the Tar Heels of North Carolina, Fuller is the big man, number 95. He'll make several All-American teams. Mike Amoon and Shepard are great linebackers. Secondary, James Black, Harris, and Hendrickson. Second down, five, with the ball in the seven-yard line. Give it to Joyner. Nice hole, and Joyner's in for the touchdown. You will not see the middle of the Carolina defense opened up much wider than that. Solt and Haraka forming a tremendous hole, creating the hole for Joyner to exploit, and Maryland moves into the lead. Let's look at Salt and Haraka, number 66 and 57. Zone blocking, they just go right at their men, and Joyner follows in behind, makes a cut to the inside, spins around, and plows into the end zone. And the Terps are on the board early. Jess Atkinson looking for his 72nd consecutive extra point. That's Esaias in the hole, and the kick is perfect. So the bad snap on the punt, and they move in from the 25, 10.44 to go first period. The Terrapins lead 7 to nothing. A lot of good old boys around here know the best places to hunt and fish. Places that are hard to get to and get to. By this bad snap. This was the key right there. The low snap makes it impossible for Carolina's punter to get it off. And there's Gunderman, number 29, pouncing on the football, which set up the aforementioned touchdown. Stuart Phillips is the snapper on the punch, and it was Tommy Barnhart who couldn't come up with the ball. So 7 to nothing, Maryland on top. Four minutes and 16 seconds into the game. Late afternoon start. Here at College Park, plenty of sunshine now, but as we get into the second half and dusk, it'll be the good old Musco Lighting Company from Iowa with their trucks and lights here that will illuminate the field. Jess Atkinson to 
kick off. Terrapins, 6-1 and one on the season, and with the wind at his back, no problem kicking it through the end zone again. It's the second time he's done that. And so Carolina picking up one first down on their first drive, which started at the 20. We'll start their second drive from the same spot. North Carolina, number three in the country in both polls. Nebraska is number one. Texas is number two. And Carolina coming in 7-0, number three. A season that has gone pretty much the way most people expected it to go for Carolina to this point. Flag is down as there was some confusion on the stat. Van Cabbage turns it into a five-yard pickup, but there was movement. And let's see about the call. Courtney Mosey is the referee. Illegal procedure against North Carolina. Some miscommunication there between Paris Barton and Scott Stankavich. Courtney Mosey is the referee and the rest of the fellows he is working with from the ACC today. down 15 after the penalty Carolina at the 15 yard line and it's the up back Colson who gets out past the 20 he takes it to the 22 yard line and Peter Cox makes the tackle number 79 it'll be second down and eight from the 22 yard line Dick Crumb look at that record he's a quiet man he's not a drum beater he's a he's a fellow who uh, not doesn't necessarily keep to himself, but he's not the kind of guy that, uh, for instance, like a Lou Holtz, who can generate a lot of publicity for himself. He just does the job. On second and eight, it's after Colson on a screen, and he takes it out to the 23-yard line. Rick Brewer, the sports information director at North Carolina, was telling us yesterday that in the first seven games this season, North Carolina has not thrown a screen pass. I remember that, and I remember telling him we'll probably see it on the first or second series. And sure enough, there we see a little screen out to Colson. I wouldn't be uh, at all surprised if we see a, a, a few wrinkles from both teams for this game because they've been saving up. They've been saving up a little something for this contest. Third down and seven. At the 23 yard line. Colson is stopped at the 25. Thus, the Tar Heels will be forced to kick again. It's Tom McHale who makes the tackle. Not Barron. They have a couple of 92s listed. And it's McHale who's wearing that number today. Now we'll take a look at the snap by Phillips. And the punt this time, gotten away by Barnhart, fielded at the 40-yard line. To the 50, to the 45, and down he goes is Joe Krause, and there's a penalty marker down as well. I bet you it's a late hitter, a clip. Flag has been dropped at the 42 of the Tar Heels. 35-yard kick and a 15-yard return. And the call is against Maryland. It was a clip. So instead of having the ball in North Carolina territory, and in good shape at about the 45. They'll take over back at the 40. Here's the call. Ripping. Red. First down. So there's a timeout on the field. Maryland will have it at the 40-yard line with 8.31 to go in the period. 7 to nothing. Terrapins. Eight minutes and 31 seconds remaining in the first period at Bird Stadium in College Park, Maryland, just outside of Washington, D.C. Beautiful campus, the University of Maryland, 53,000. Looking on this series from the 40-yard line, and it's dropped by Willie Joyner. Late developing screen. As it turned out, uh, probably no damage anyway, because Joyner didn't have much room in which to maneuver at that point. Boomer Esiason from Long Island. He had some problems here when he started his uh, collegiate career. In fact, he had some problems academically as well. One semester, his grade point average was a .9, but he has turned his life around, both on and off the field. 
On second down and 10 from the 40-yard line, short pass out to Russ Davis, number 84. He takes it to the 48. We talked to a scientist. He's a very engaging fella. I liked him. You know, he has a reputation of being cocky, but uh, he prefers the word confidence to cocky. And uh, I, I experienced him that way, frankly. I did not experience him as a, as a cocky person. He, uh, he seems to exude confidence, but it's more of a, an assurance rather than uh, someone who's tooting his own horn a lot. Third down and two. Maryland at the 48-yard line. Russell Davis goes in motion. He comes back the other way. And they pitch it to Badonic. Their short yardage back. And he picks up the first down as he gets into Tar Heel territory. And Larry Jeans comes up from the corner to make the stop. Al, that may have looked like a mix-up by Russell Davis as he went in motion there, but that was definitely planned. That's one of several types of motion that they have by the flanker. The Terrapin record, as you can see, a victory over Vanderbilt. Then their only loss of the season to West Virginia came back to beat Pitt, and they won five in a row coming in. First down, Terrapins at the Tar Heel 48-yard line. Again, Russ Davis in motion. And on a misdirection play, it's Joyner who takes it to the 45-yard line. That's one of the base plays in their book. They like that play very much. Uh, Joyner told me that uh, his favorite plays are the, the blast play or, or isolation, the power pitch, and the misdirection play. So they, they use him uh, over and over again on those three plays. Second down and seven. Maryland with the ball at the Carolina 46. Maryland leading. Seven to nothing. Seven minutes and 25 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Esiason. Good protection. Throws into a lot of traffic and it's nearly intercepted. The ball just hung. It was intended for Russell Davis. He was covered well and Esiason trying to throw it right in between a couple of defenders and is lucky he didn't come away with an interception. It's more like three. Watch Russell Davis and you're going to see three Tar Heels around him. Two right there. He slipped and he didn't make a move to get out of trouble. There's the third one coming into your picture right now. Talking about Hendrickson and Griffin and Jarris. Third down and seven from the 46 yard line. Messias in his one for his first four. He's under some pressure and he dumps it off and it's incomplete. He was pressured from both sides, in particular number 95, William Fuller. Made him get rid of it in a hurry, intended for Joyner and incomplete. And so Maryland, after picking up one first down on this drive, will kick for the first time in the game. And with the wind at his back to do the punting for the Terrapins, is number 80, Allen Sadler, and back deep, Walter Black is the single safety at his own 10-yard line. Again, a strong breeze blowing at the back of Sadler, who's aiming for the corner, but it bounces back toward the middle and turns out to be a beauty at the five-yard line. And a penalty marker is down at the 35-yard line. Marker is down. Illegal use of the hands is the call against Maryland. So they'll probably make them kick it again because they've got a terrific roll. And yeah, they'll be bringing it back. Interesting. Sadler looked uh, as if he was trying to put it in the corner. He knows he has the wind at his back in this particular situation. As it turned out, Bounce to a stop near the center of the field. Here's the Here use the hands. Red. Fourth down. So as you look at the Maryland offensive unit getting ready for their next series, the punting unit in here again with Sadler to do the booting. Good high kick this time. And as a matter of fact, it's too good a kick for Sadler, who puts it through the end zone. So Carolina again starts this drive at the 20-yard line with 6.50 to go in the period. Maryland, 7. And North Carolina, nothing. Well, there is Dave Daddio, who is the number one fullback for Maryland. Not only a man who picks up some uh, valuable yardage on the ground, he's also the team's leading receiver, but he 
suffered a separated shoulder in Maryland's win last week against Duke. Thus, he is out, and Madonic has taken his spot. Meanwhile, Carolina trails 7 0. And a Tar Heel start from the 20 yard line with Stan Cavage on the play action, going back, throwing for Smith and incomplete at the 35 yard line. It'll be second down and 10. Now, North Carolina, much was made about an easy schedule early on, but they went. Sometimes when you have an easy schedule, it's tough to get the team up week after week, especially in the middle there with Miami of Ohio and William and Mary and Georgia Tech. Dick Crum said that was a pretty tough time for him because every week uh, in the papers you're reading about Carolina playing an inferior opponent. He said it's tough to keep the kids up, but he did, and they come in 7-0. and Eddie Colson takes it out to the 24-yard line. It's funny. I guess we live in a type of society where even if you're unbeaten, people are always looking for the chinks in the armor. So everybody says, well, Carolina plays such a soft schedule, so we really can't take them seriously. It's really unfair in a way. Nebraska 31-5 in the second period, leading Kansas State. Big one there. Auburn leading Florida 21-7 halftime. Auburn, by the way, takes on Maryland next week. And Illinois takes a giant step toward Pasadena by beating Michigan 16-6. Sam Cavage getting sacked as the charge came through, led by J.D. Gross, number 51. A senior from nearby Landover, Maryland, and Brian Baker, number two. J.D. Gross, number 51, is the outside linebacker as Stan Cavage fades seven yards in the pocket, and nobody picks him up as he comes in from the outside. He gets the first hit, and the second hit is by number two, Brian Baker taking Stan Cavage down. Another low snap, but the kick is away, and it hangs into the teeth of a very strong breeze, and the fair catch made at the 47-yard line by Joe Krause. 35-yard punt. Maryland takes over near midfield. They lead 7-0, 5.33 to go in the quarter. What was Charlie Justice's nickname? Choo Choo, and what a man he was in the late 40s. After the war, of course, everybody needed a hero, and uh, he really was the quintessential hero here in the uh, in the South. There, there's never been anyone quite like Charlie Choo Choo Justice. I remember watching him on film and just thinking that's the way a tailback should be. Meanwhile, Carolina Trail, 7-0. Maryland has the ball at the 47-yard line, first and 10. Esiason off a short drop, throws behind Eric Holder, the intended receiver. And it's second down 10. They are talking about Esiason as a possible first-round NFL choice. The great quarterbacks, of course, all graduated last year when six went in the first round. This year, the crop is not nearly as good, but uh, among the top quarterbacks in the country would be Esiason and people like Steve Young and Brigham Young and Ben Bennett, of course, in the conference at Duke. And Hostetler and Todd Dillon of Long Beach State would probably round out the top five. But as you pointed out, it has not been a bumper crop year at all for quarterbacks after the great year in 1982. Of course, 1982 was unique in that five quarterbacks went in the first round of the pro draft. Bobby Ross. There's an old quarterback himself. Second year head coach at Maryland. He had been in a system here back in the early 70s in 1972. He took over when Jerry Claiborne left here after the 81 season and went to Maryland. He had spent the four prior years as an assistant with the Kansas City Chiefs. Esiason gets it off to Badonic, and Badonic gets wrestled down inside the 30-yard line. So Badonic, who is taking the place of the injured Daddio, makes the catch and picks up the extra yardage. Brian Johnston put the pressure on Esaias in that time. Boomer See the, the play nice action? Pass. See the play action fake? They fake the misdirection, and that's why Boomer is regarded so highly. Very quick release right there as he got the ball off under duress to Badonic, who has been one of the leading receivers coming out of the backfield, and that's a big play right there for the Terps, and now they are knocking at the door. First and 10 at the North Carolina 29-yard line. With Holder in motion, it's Joyner slipping to the outside. Down 
Finally goes after a gain of five. Mike Amun, number 39, will get credit for the tackle. Boomer, as we pointed out, has improved steadily since 1981. You talked about the early rough times he had both on the field and off the field. But in this last year, he has improved in, in several different ways. He's throwing the ball with a little more touch. He has quicker feet. He's throwing with more authority, and he is throwing the ball a little softer and more of a looping trajectory on his long passes. Second down, five at the 25-yard line. Joiner over the right side gets to the 22. It'll be third and about two upcoming. William Fuller, number 95, who will make a lot of All-America teams. He's a 6'4", 250-pound senior out of Chesapeake, Virginia. William Fuller. What does that all mean? Maryland is as easy as ABC. Not for the heels so far today. I was going to say. 7-0. Terrapins on top. 3.50 to go. First period. Third down. Call it two. They bunch the backs together, and it's Badonic who gets inside the 20, and he should have the first down. Badonic has really been the definitive goal line and short yardage runner for them. He just seems to have a knack. You know, he isn't that big. He's kind of the, the human bowling ball type a la Charlie Tolar, Don Nottingham, that bunch. Not quite a bowling ball, a semi-bowling ball, maybe. Quasi-bowling ball. Slipping into the security of a foreign language, a dead language at that, and it's only the first quarter. I thought he had a first down, but they measure and he doesn't. They did not give him as much progress as I had initially anticipated. They're shy by, as you can see, a couple of inches, and on fourth down in this situation, pretty easy choice for Bobby Ross. He leads seven nothing. Madonic has shown he can pick up the yardage. They also have Joiner back there. Or Boomer may call his own number. He could. From just inside the 20-yard line. And Esiason does just that, and he should have the requisite inches necessary. He went in behind Kevin Glover right through the middle and Maryland will have a first down or should anyway. Brown doesn't like where that ball was spotted. It's interesting where they where he spotted that ball now all of a sudden instead of what looked like a sure first down for Esiason may not be. I totally agree with you. I thought it was a certain first down and now there's, it's going to be uh, very very close. It looked like he had it with ease when they ran the playoff. They're going to give it to him, though. He has it anyway. So first down for Maryland with the ball at the 19-yard line. Why World of Sports next Saturday features the World Gymnastics Championships taking place in Budapest, Hungary. The Dublin Mile. Eamon Codman coming home to run in that one. World Speedway Motorcycle Championship next week. First down. Holder in motion from the 19-yard line. It's Joyner, the eye back, who slips one tackle, but not a second. Bill Shepard making the stop after a gain of a yard, maybe two. Three minutes to go in the first quarter. And with three minutes to go in the first quarter, it has really been a textbook game plan thus far for Bobby Ross. What he told us yesterday, Al, is that he felt that they had to challenge North Carolina at the line of scrimmage early on, and that field possession would be very important for his team. And thus far, they have done just that. They have had the favorable field position uh, throughout the first quarter. One thing he was worried about, he thought the, the offensive line of Carolina might chew up his gang, but that hasn't happened so far. Maryland defense has done the job, and the offense tries to move it again as the size and rolls left, and it's incomplete. But Donick was having some problems, not only with his balance, but also might have been looking into the sun as well. Meanwhile, we have a moment to look back at an interview we did yesterday with Esiason. Boomer talks about his confidence. Uh, I've never wanted one to be cocky. I, I don't feel that I'm cocky. I try so hard not to be. I'm very confident in my abilities and the team that I play with. Uh, my, uh, my teammates' abilities, I'm very confident as well. And, uh, I hope that I've never stepped on anybody's toes and I try not to be cocky. And uh, I just like to consider myself a confident quarterback who knows what his limitations and knows what his team's abilities are. Madonna carrying on third down. Takes it to the 11-yard line. 
We have been talking about Boomer uh, when he came here, uh, Al, you know, th throughout this first quarter and some of the uh, the problems that he's had. And it's interesting uh, to really go back and look at his career because uh, in 1979, he was about ready to pack it in. He was so disenchanted both uh, athletically and academically that he was thinking about leaving Maryland. And now he says the saddest day of his life will be when he plays his last game, which will be today in Bird Stadium. He's holding for Atkinson's field goal attempt, and the kick is good. So Atkinson, from the 19-yard line, a 29-yard field goal for him. For the season, he is now 11 of 14. And with the wind at their backs here in the first period, and 133 remaining in the first quarter, Maryland leads North Carolina by a score of 10-0. Let's check in with Jim Lampley. All right, Jim, 28-7. Auburn leading in that one. As we mentioned, Auburn next week takes on Maryland at Auburn. This is the final home game for the Maryland Terps. Interestingly enough, the way the schedule has worked out for them this season, six home games, but it all ends today. So none after the 29th of October. They'll finish on the road at Auburn, at Clemson, and at North Carolina State. That's what I meant when I was talking about Boomer, that he was playing his last home game today and that he felt that this was going to be a very sad day for him and that he might just hang around and, and look at the stadium after the game and reflect on what's happened to him over these last five years. He is a redshirt senior. He might have some nice reflections as it stands right now. Atkinson winded his back, and that's the third time he's kicked it deep enough for a touchback. It's a pretty good quarter for Atkinson. Three kicks into or through the end zone. One field goal, one extra point. Maryland on top by a score of 10 to nothing with a minute and 33 seconds remaining in the first quarter. North Carolina, the fellas up front talking about Bobby Ross. One of the things he was worried about was that big offensive front for North Carolina would blow some people out of there. Hasn't been the case. And again, here it's the Maryland defense that bunches him up. There's a penalty marker down. Tyrone Anthony, number eight, was the ball carrier, but a marker's down at the line of scrimmage. As I was saying a moment ago, the defense of Maryland has really been the key thus far because they have indeed been challenging the Tar Heels at the line of scrimmage and dominating the line of scrimmage. One thing to keep in mind about the Tar Heels as you look at the kicker Atkinson North Carolina has not played particularly well in the first half of several games this year in fact uh, they trailed Georgia Tech 21 to 10 at the half and wound up winning the game 38 to 21 so they've been a great second half team that's the advantage of a great tailback tandem and a big offensive line too because if one tailback doesn't do it sometimes the other one will and 15. This is Anthony who takes it out close to the 40 yard line. Stopped by Clarence Baldwin and Al Covington. Now they go to work. This is what I was talking about the tailback tandem. This is Tyrone Anthony, who is both a slasher and an evader. You see some of those juke steps there as he bounces off a man, cuts out to his right. And Clarence Baldwin and Al Covington are the men who finally bring him down for Maryland. And from the 41-yard line, they'll call his number again, this time for a gain of two. Anthony, a senior, 6'1", 206-pounder. We haven't seen Horton yet. He's 6'4", and 218, and just a junior. McCauley, Johnson, Boyd, Betterson, Lawrence, and Bryant, all over 1,000 yards in the last decade for North Carolina great tailback tradition going back all the way to the days of Choo Choo Justice. Second and eight from the 43 yard line in the waning seconds of the first quarter. Third carry in a row for Anthony. Out the 48 yard line. That will be the final play of the first period and when the second quarter commences it will be third down and about three. Anthony is the starter but Horton actually has the better numbers. And the first quarter has concluded at Bird Stadium and College Park. Crowd here, they loved it. It's 10-0 Maryland after one. Park, Maryland. Al Michaels and Lee Grosscup with you. We start the second period. Maryland leads North Carolina 10-0. And Lee was talking about the great tailback tradition in North Carolina, graphically illustrated there from 1970 on. 
some of the men and their numbers. What is interesting is that in some of those years they had two tailbacks with a thousand yards in the same season. Last time I covered this team in 1980 they had Amos Lawrence and Kelvin Bryant both over a thousand yards. Now Anthony as we start the second quarter needed three yards to pick up the first down as he gets to the 49 yard line of Maryland. And from our vantage point he appears to have it and does first down. When you think about tailbacks over the last two or three decades of course you think about USC and North Carolina. Those are the two schools that really pop out first of all. I guess like you said earlier because of the fact that USC has had so many Heisman tailbacks that you think primarily of USC. But if you compare the numbers I would say that it would be an even matchup. On first down Stan Cavage almost fell down as he handed the ball off to Tyrone Anthony. He picks up four and let's check in with Jim Lampley in New York for this update. West Virginia, only team to beat Maryland this year, had taken a 3-0 lead in the Orange Bowl against Miami, but then Miami came back. 19-yard touchdown pass from Boney, Bernie Kozar to Glenn Dennison, and the Hurricanes now lead the Mountaineers 7-3 in the first. Allen? All right, Jim. Jim Lampley, graduate of North Carolina. His team trailing 10-0 with a second down and six from the 45-yard line. And through the middle again goes Anthony, but this time they read the play after a gain of one. Number 83 Bruce Messner freshman from Harrison New York in on the stop. The key as we said would be North Carolina shutting down the running game of North Carolina. Now look there in the on the second line 39 yards rushing only for the Tar Heels in that first quarter time of possession about even. And as I said, all throughout the first quarter, Maryland had favorable field position. Of course, the key play in the game thus far, that bad snap. There is a flag here as Carolina lines up on third down and five. And who joined us late, North Carolina, attempting to punt on their first possession. Bad snap. Maryland recovered at the 25-yard line, went in for the touchdown. They've added a field goal. Call here is against North Carolina. Carolina trying to mount its first sustained drive of the afternoon, but it cost them five. Substitution infraction on the white, third down. Substitution infraction for Carolina. Dick Crum. This is a key play right here for the heels, and what Stan Cavage has liked to do in these situations, third and obvious pass situations, is go with twin set, put two wide receivers to the same side of the field, and then sprint toward that side and try to go to the sideline. Third down and 10 as Stan Cavage gets protection, throws, and it's complete, and it's close to a first down for Franklin, who caught the ball about eight yards past the line of scrimmage, and I think he fought for the two and a half he needed to pick up the first. J.D. Gross made the stop. Pretty good call based on what I just said, because instead of uh, going to the wide receivers, he used them as a decoy and came to his tight end, number 80, Arnold Franklin, on a crossing pattern, and he had some room in the middle. Close enough to measure. With the ball at the 39-yard line of the Terrapins. And he picks up the first down. With 12 minutes and 48 seconds remaining in the first half. Awesome bowl bound Carolina. There's little doubt that both these teams are bowl bound. Where they'll go is the big question. Especially in the Carolina situation, if they go through the season unbeaten, they would like to beat, if they can, the team that's number one, have a chance to win the national championship, be it Nebraska in the Orange Bowl or Texas in the Cotton Bowl, if they get there. This is Colson who gets to the 35-yard line. The way things look right now, if you follow college football, if you assume Nebraska wins the Big Eight, they have the tie-in with the Orange Bowl, so they would go to... Miami, of course, the big stumbling block would be their game against Oklahoma. If Texas wins its conference race, the Southwest Conference, they're obligated to go to the Cotton Bowl. Carolina, of course, can go wherever they'd like, wherever they're invited. So some interesting possibilities ahead. But uh, as Dick Crum likes to point out, uh, we've got a few regular season games to play first. Second down and seven from the 36-yard line. Up 
it's Stankavich who keeps himself to the 34-yard line. He ran into Anthony. You can get a better view right here of what Al Michaels was talking about. You see the mix-up in the backfield. Anthony was supposed to come to the left side of the quarterback. Instead, he came to the right side. And so as a result of that, all Stan Cavage did was just try to salvage the play and came back to the line of scrimmage. Third down and five from the 34-yard line. Blitz! But he gets it away, and he has the first down. It's Arnold Franklin again who makes his second key catch on this drive, run out of bounds by the linebacker Bobby DePaul. Eric Wilson was the man, number 55, who put the pressure on Stan Cavage, but he hung in well and has another first down. Good quick release that time by Stan Cavage as he read the blitz. And Maryland, one of the few teams in the country that still uses the old wide tackle six. And so they're, the guys on the outside are sometimes down and sometimes they're up. First down, Tar Heels from the 27-yard line as you watch it from the end zone. And to the short side of the field goes Anthony. And he picks up some good yardage before he is finally run out near the 15-yard line. That was a good view from the end zone of what I was just talking about, the wide tackle six defense. That reminds me of, of the way it looked a lot back in the 50s when I was playing. Mostly back in the 50s, you saw five and six man looks defensively. Nowadays, you see more four and three man looks in terms of the down linemen. There it is. Of course, that's a, a carryover from the Jerry Claiborne days. First and 10 from the 15 yard line, and Anthony's been the man. He gets another yard or two. Anthony's already carried the ball 12 times for 63 yards, and we still haven't seen Horton yet. That's the way they work their tailbacks. They are very tailback oriented. And mostly the definitive tailback plays. Line of scrimmage is the 13. Second down, eight. First sustained drive of the day for North Carolina. Maryland leads 10 nothing. 10 minutes, 33 seconds remaining first half. Smith, nice move, and Smith is over for the touchdown. Mark Smith, number 45, a top receiver, scores his eighth touchdown of the season. You can see why he's been in the end zone that much with moves like that. Low angle look at a quick pass out to Mark Smith. Quick sideline route. And what he does well is he cuts back inside, makes a juke step and a lip leg, and then dives for the end zone. Great play by the leading receiver, Mark Smith. Meanwhile, all of the scoring in the game has been done downwind. Keep it in mind. Carolina moving with the wind here. Brooks Barwick, the conventional style kicker, works that one through. Barwick is 33 out of 35 now for the year. 10-19 to go in the first half at College Park, Maryland. 10, North Carolina 7. 10, North Carolina 7 with 10 minutes and 19 seconds remaining in the second quarter. And here come the heels. They were over discussing things with Dick Frum and his staff. North Carolina undefeated coming in but as we mentioned uh, it's been uh, it's been a situation where they really haven't been necessarily tested in terms of the scores when you look at the final scores uh, they have not really been in a very close game but uh, that's deceiving in the sense that uh, three different times they've trailed at the half and have been forced to come from behind and in fact in their last game against NC State they were tied at the half, 14 all, 1 and 42, 14. And kicking with the win is Bob Rogers. He's their long field goal kicker and kickoff man. And he puts it out of the end zone. Again, uh, and we'll keep reinforcing it for late tuners in as you watch the game from this angle. The wind is blowing left to right. And it's uh, gusting at about 20 miles per hour. It's having quite an effect on the offense. North Carolina, 80 yards, 14 plays down win, took him 6-14, 10-7 Maryland. Meanwhile, it was a offside call. 
and thus they'll boot it again. Gives us a chance to update you. Nebraska number one, Irving Fryer and company on top 38 to five at the half. Texas leads Texas Tech 10 to three. It's your favorite wingback, you and Howie. Irving Fryer, you betcha. Auburn 28, Fryer to seven. Became a fractional hoss in a baseball game. He I certainly think. did. <laughs> Georgia and Temple are underway. The Bulldogs are number six in the country. No score. You missed it before. Illinois defeating Michigan today, and so uh, they'll celebrate in Champaign tonight with Mike White's gang. In Champaign or with Champaign? Well, with both. In and with, as they have taken a major step toward New Year's Day in Pasadena. Georgia, by the way, over Temple, 31 to 14 was the final score. I looked at that myself and figured that game's got to be over by now, and it is. 31 to 14, Georgia beats Temple. So now Rodgers to kick off again, this time from the 35-yard line. Strong breeze at his back, and he exploits it again. So the penalty does no damage in terms of where Maryland will wind up with the ball. They'll start this drive from the 20-yard line. Maryland 10, North Carolina 7. Maryland coming in winning five straight, winning six of seven overall this season. And North Carolina unbeaten. Interesting, these two teams fighting it out for the conference championship in football. And uh, they're probably uh, first and second in most preseason analyses for the upcoming basketball year. First down. Terrapins from the 20, and Esiason goes right to the air. It throws over the middle. And completes it out to Chris Knight, the tight end number 85, for a gain of five. Again, that was William Fuller, 95, who was putting the pressure on Esiason. He is a bona fide Outland candidate. William Fuller, who, at his defensive tackle position, a senior at 6'4", 250 pounds, has the, the strength and the quickness that you like. He was slowed by uh, injuries early on in the year, but in the last four or five games, Al, he's been awesome. Second down and five. Maryland from the 25-yard line. Nothing works for Joyner. Slow developing play. It's the risk you run with a play of that nature. You hope that uh, you're sucking in the defense, but it's so late developing as you look at the Georgia final there that uh, if you don't get off the dime in a hurry, down you go at the line of scrimmage. Miami, 7-3 over West Virginia, first period. Chris Knight sets up on the right side. The tight end on third down and five, and they work to the strong side. And it is Badonic who cannot get outside, and he is stopped at the 27-yard line. So Maryland forced not to go into the wind, and it's making a big difference, gang. And Carolina will get the ball back. Clock running with eight minutes, 45 seconds remaining in the first half. Maryland on top, 10 to seven. Very definitely a factor is the win. Sadler to kick into it now from the 10-yard line. That's Walter Black, senior. 5'10", 170-pound defensive back. Sadler, a high kick that hangs now. Black from the 44 gets rammed immediately. Is fortunate to hold on to the ball. Eddie Schultz was the man who hit him with 8.20 to go in the half, and Maryland on top by a field goal. Al Michaels, Lee Grosskup at College Park, Maryland. Scott Stamkiewicz ready to take over here with North Carolina at its own 45-yard line. 8.20 to go first half, Maryland 10, and UNC 7. Stamkiewicz. Quick count gives it to Eddie Colson. Colson takes it across the 50 to the Maryland 48 yard line, a gain of about seven. Second down, three. Well, Duke wins. First victory for Duke, 32 to 26 over Georgia Tech today. Clemson keeps rolling, 24 17 over Wake Forest. 
halftime, Mississippi State giving Alabama all it can handle. On second down and three, Stan Cabbage under pressure and throws complete for a first down to Earl Winfield, number 21, sophomore from Dinwiddie, Virginia. He stopped by Clarence Baldwin. Five of eight now for Stan Cabbage as he begins to find his range here in the second quarter. We mentioned at the top of the show that he's a high percentage passer and he ranks third nationally in terms of overall passing efficiency. Only Steve Young of BYU and Ricky Turner of Washington State right ahead of him right now. First down, North Carolina at the 36 yard line. On a roll, it's tipped and incomplete. For his second down. Peter Koch, number 79, was the man who batted it away. 740 remaining in the first half. Update from New York now. Check in again with Jim Lampley. Let's bring you up to date on just three quick scores. Texas is now final. They have beaten Texas Tech 20 to 3. The Longhorns still unbeaten. Georgia won its homecoming game, 24th straight win at home, 31-14 over Temple, but they lost Terry Hogue with an injury. No telling how long he'll be out. Alabama now leads 28-12 over Mississippi State in the third quarter. Walter Lewis having a big game. Back to Al Michaels. All right, Jim, as Eddie Colson takes the ball inside the 30 to the 28-yard line. Tyrone Furman, number 95, makes the stop. And so Carolina, which got off to a sputtering start on its first three offensive series, has put it all together now, going 80 yards for a touchdown and looking sharp on this drive to this point. And they're doing exactly what Dick Crum likes to do. They're dominating with inside running plays by the fullback and all of the classic tailback plays and the high percentage passes by Stan Cabot. Stan Cabbage rolling right, throwing an incomplete intended for the diving Dave Truitt, number 82. Meanwhile, there is Ethan Horton, the other part of that tailback tandem. His numbers for the season, as you can see, he's just 191 yards shy of reaching the 1,000 mark, and yet he hasn't seen any action yet today. He will. Dan Cabbage now perfect 500. He's 5 of 10 for 44 yards and one touchdown. Fourth down and two for North Carolina at the 28-yard line. They're within field goal range, but they're going to go for the first down. With the wind at their backs and the way they're moving on this drive, and Stan Cabbage throws. He's got it to Anthony. He's inside the 20 and works his way to the 12-yard line where Clarence Baldwin makes the tackle. So Anthony makes the reception, and Carolina keeps the drive alive. Excellent call on fourth down here. You get a sprint out by the quarterback, and here comes Anthony out to the right flat as they flood a zone here, and he jukes and spins away from two defenders, Baldwin and Claus, in the secondary. 16 yards on the play on fourth and three, a big one. First down, North Carolina at the 12-yard line. They trail by three. Anthony for a gain of two, stopped in the middle by 55, Eric Wilson. Second down and eight upcoming. So Anthony's gone all the way to this point. Dick Crum with a tremendous winning percentage. Nice man, very affable fellow, as we said, quiet. Low nice profile. Reserve, low profile man. Team reflects his personality. It does, very much so. Second down and eight from the 10 yard line. And Stan Cavage lofts it into the end zone for the touchdown. What a play by Larry Griffin. Not only perfect timing involved, but he's looking back, and that's one of the few spots at that end of the field where the sun is still shining. He's looking back into the sun as well. So North Carolina takes the lead, 5.54 to go in the half, another look. This is the consummate touch and timing pattern as Dan Cabbage throws the ball right there, and you see that Griffin, number three, beats Baldwin, number 23. Look at this, one, two, three, throw. Now, he doesn't even know where the ball is, where the receiver is going to wind up. He just throws to a spot, and Griffin right there beats Baldwin, looks back into the sun and makes the catch. Barwick's extra point is good, and so Carolina, after a stumbling offensive start, 
have put together two long drives, and with 5.54 remaining in the first half, it's UNC 14, Maryland 10. This impossible dream comes true! And now, there are new dreams. Scott Stancavage, who you see right there uh, on the bench, really got off to a slow start today, Al. One of four in the first quarter, but in the second quarter, he's now six of eight for 69 yards, seven of 12 on the day now for a total of 70. But the important thing, he's thrown for two touchdowns. And he's led two very impressive drives, and after Maryland had taken a 10 to nothing lead, it's 14 to 10, West Carolina. And all the points have been downwind today, all 24. Some officials have compared uh, him to Pat Hayden, the former USC quarterback. I don't necessarily see it in his release uh, or his, his overall throwing style. I guess maybe they think because of his size, maybe similar size, to the fact that he's a high percentage passer. But uh, Pat was better at throwing the long ball. And he's also a good student, I and mean, that's what they're talking about. Uh -huh. <laughs> Hayden was a road starter. Drop at the 10 yard line and a penalty marker is down. Tommy Neal running it back. It's like 48. It's like two different football games. We've got a holding call against Maryland. So they weren't in good shape to begin with on the run back as he took it out only to the 11 yard line. Now they're even in the, the worst position at the six. Really use the hands on the red. First down. First down Maryland. And uh, you get an idea there as to the uh, shadows, the sun going down here in College Park. Don't forget, I guess what, tonight's the night you, you get an extra hour of sleep. We'll need it by the time we get back to California. That's right. Set that clock back before you retire. We go to standard time tomorrow. First down from the six-yard line as Joyner tries to give them some breathing room, and he takes it out to the 10. Stopped by Bill Shepard and Willie Harris. Five minutes and 35 seconds remaining in the first half. SMU, 10th rank. Having a tough time with AM leading by three in the third quarter. Second down and a long five from just outside the 10 yard line. Boomer Esiason hands it to Joyner, and there's a greeting party. They'll give him forward progress. William Fuller, number 95, led the charge. We've talked about Fuller. Keep him in mind because you're going to see that name on a lot of All-America teams this year. Number 95, William Fuller, leads the charge as tailback Willie Joyner is trying to cut inside first, tries to go outside. Here comes Fuller. And also Aaron Jackson, number 81, adds with a hit. But Fuller really has the tools that you like at the defensive tackle position. The size, the strength, and the quickness. Third down, nine. Ball at the seven-yard line. Asias in off the play fake. Look out! And he goes down in the end zone. There's also a flag down. I have not seen a signal for a safety. I think somebody could have grabbed his face mask. Let's double check. That's the call. Grab the face mask. It was Wendell Battle, number. 79 who came charging in and he was thinking about the two points and instead he winds up with a penalty called against him. He's the man who's replacing Brian Johnson who normally starts at that spot. Strange call here Al. They go play action pass way back by your own goal line. Now battle coming in right there. There it is right there. See it? Very, very flagrant. What it means now is a third down and three from the 13-yard line. Siasen giving it off to Badonic. 
And he's close to a first down, but may not have it. And according to Carolina and their reaction, he definitely doesn't have it. Bill Shepard made the pop number 23, and they will measure. But the Tar Heel defense, pretty sure they have the Terrapin stopped with 4.13 to play in the first half. Shepard, who led the team in tackles with 45 and 30 assists coming into today's game, does indeed shut him down about that far from the first down. That's going to bring up a punting situation. And they'll be kicking into the wind, the punting unit coming out. Alan Sadler, who, by the way, he's 6'5", and the punter, and Jess Atkinson, who is 5'9", and the place kicker, have... A in schoolmates since they were in the fifth grade at the school together in Camp Springs, Maryland. Walter Black standing at the 50-yard line, ready to receive the kick. Moving into a strong wind, still gusting at about uh, 15 to 20 miles per hour. High, floating, short kick, and it's fielded by one of the up men at the 41-yard line. The catch is made there by Darrell Johnson. So Carolina in good shape, leading by four, 356 to go in the half. North Carolina on top by a score of 14 to 10, with 356 remaining in the first half at Burge Stadium. Capacity listed at 50,000. Don't have a crowd count yet, but they were anticipating 53. Lawrence Taylor, with the last time I covered him in 1980, was against Clemson, Al, and in that particular game, he made 12 tackles, 12 solo tackles, went on to be the rookie of the year next year and has been the defensive player of the year in the NFL the last two years. Meanwhile, here is Ethan Horton, who's in the game now, and his first carry nets him very close to a first down. So we saw Anthony to this point throughout the whole first period and most of the second quarter. And now they go to Horton, who is 6'4", 218 pounds, and a very interesting story, as everybody in North Carolina knows. Came to UNC as a quarterback. And all of a sudden, because of some injuries two years ago, he became a tailback. And he had a tremendous night in the Gator Bowl two years ago against Arkansas in the best game nobody ever saw. That was the night the fog rolled in. And a crowd of 67,000 never saw the game. <laughs> I was laughing. You and Eric Parsigian were covering that game, and I was sitting at home just chuckling because you guys were, were obviously scratching and clawing that night. You yeah, they, didn't they, see a thing. They told us Horton had a great night. Meanwhile, on <laughs> second down and short yardage, a whistle sounds before the play gets off, and they may have taken too much time, and in fact, that's the call. So that's not exactly what you want to have happen to you on second down and inches. Well, he really, uh, he got a lot of national attention in the Gator Bowl, but he really emerged in this very game two years ago as a freshman. And as you pointed out, he was recruited initially as a quarterback. So when he's in there, you can always think about the possibility of the option pass. Auburn leading now by 14 in that one. And again, it's Ethan Horton getting the call as he gets to the 34-yard line. Gain of a couple. It'll be third down and a long three. 247, 246, and the clock ticking down now in the first half. North Carolina with the ball and the lead. Tar Heels on top, 14 to 10. Again, UNC ranked third in both polls. Maryland 10th in the long, 13th in the other. He is stopped. He is stopped shy of the first down at the 32. And this is going to present an interesting choice now for Dick Crum. Because it's going to be fourth down and about two. And he's going with the wind at his back. 32 plus 17. Uh, you're talking about a, a possible 49-yard field goal attempt. Let's see what he decides to do here. And they're going to go for the field goal, at least... Uh, Presumably, as Brooks Barwick. Lines it up at the 39-yard line. So a 49-yard attempt will be upcoming. Meanwhile, there is a timeout called by North Carolina. 
And we can take the time to remind you that the World Gymnastics Championships, the Dublin Mile, and the World Speedway Motorcycle Championship come your way next Saturday on ABC's Wide World of Sports. Dublin Mile is via satellite, same day coverage from Ireland, and even Coughlin is uh, expected to participate in that one. Brooks Barwick, who originally was in, goes out. Now they've got a fourth down, two, two and a half, let's say, from the 33 yard line. And after he had uh, made his little divot and got ready to put the tee down, they call timeout, think about it again, and perhaps they'll be going for it here. Golf imagery. I agree with Crom on this call, okay, but I think uh, as you look at Warwick, who originally came out to, to kick the field goal, he's got the wind in his back, he's been moving fairly well. 150 to go in the half, and it's Stan Cambridge on a roll, and he throws, and it is complete at the 29-yard line to Earl Winfield. Kind of a risky little play in that situation, but it works for him. Well, they did it once before on fourth down. They went once before on the, to the right on sprint out. He sprints left here. There's Winfield along the sideline as Baldwin comes up to put on the pressure. But it really is a perfect call on fourth down to go with your quick passing game. This is one of the things that Bobby Ross told us yesterday that he was concerned about, along with that power running, was their quick passing game. First half, Carolina for the 28th. They have two timeouts remaining. It's Eddie Colson who takes it inside the 25 to the 22. A minute 18, a minute 17, and counting down. Two timeouts remaining for North Carolina. Tar Heels on top by a score of 14 to 10. Kind of a cute little misdirection play there to the fullback, something you usually don't see. Usually the misdirection goes to the tailback. Ball spotted near the 21-yard line. Second down called at three. Sam Cavage to put it up. And the timing was not there that time with Larry Griffin, number three. He who caught the touchdown pass on the fade route, looking back into the sun a while ago. As I said a, a few moments ago, this, Al, to me, has been like two different football games. You had Maryland completely in charge in the first quarter, and the Heels have really owned the second quarter. And it's been a game in which uh, the wind has obviously had a major effect because all of the movement in this game has been left to right. Maryland in the first quarter, Carolina in the second. Third down and three. Stan Cavage looking, and it's a touchdown, but a penalty marker is thrown as well as Earl Winfield made the catch, and let's see about the call. A marker thrown simultaneously with the catch, and the initial indication is against Maryland. Interference against the Terrapins, so the touchdown counts. No, wait a second, offsetting, holding against North Carolina. So they started to celebrate after the initial call, and then the next thing you know, you've got offsetting penalties. You see a little uh, sigh of relief there, Bobby you. Ross. So offsetting penalties. And we'll do it over again. 45 seconds to go. Mark Smith, number 45. They set this play up very well because they came with a lot of the quick passes. He beats Joe Koss in the secondary. And so they set it up with a lot of the quick passes, some of the underneath routes, a lot of the sideline cuts. And that time he ran a sideline and deep, and he was wide open. Back where we started now, third down and three, ball at the 22-yard line. Pitch it to Horton. He's looking for room. He gets inside the 20. That's a nice little move, and it may have netted him the first down. Interesting type of runner in the sense he's big, so you you can hardly miss him. He's 6'4 and 218, and that time he just sort of waited, picked and threaded his way to what might be a first down. They're gonna measure. Interesting, after uh, they moved him from quarterback to tailback, Dick Crum, after his freshman year, asked uh, Ethan if he wanted to play quarterback again or just what. Crum told him he felt that if he was ever gonna get drafted, it would be as a running back. 
and helped make his mind up, and it's a first down. With 38 seconds and two timeouts remaining in the half for North Carolina. He's the type of player that the pro scouts really like because he's big, he has the size you like, he has the speed, he has a little bit of that wiggle that you were just talking about, and the fact that he was a quarterback in high school means that you've always got the danger of the option pass, so he would be ideal for professional football. North Carolina has just spent another time out, so Dick Crum will talk it over as they have a first down upcoming at the 18-yard line. He who is out of the cradle of coaches, Miami of Ohio. And when you talk about the cradle of coaches, of course, you're talking about player or coaches like Woody Hayes, Bo Schembechler, Era Parsegian, John Pont, Bill Mallory, to name a few. Miami of Ohio. From there, it was on to North Carolina. Of course, a school that uh, for years was known as a basketball school with uh, the legendary one, Dean Smith. Mm -hmm. Uh, the man of almost every hour in North Carolina for years, and all of a sudden, Dick Crum has come in and uh, quietly done a tremendous job. First down at the 18-yard line. Sankavich locking it incomplete. Earl Winfield, the intended receiver, but uh, he was nowhere near open. Clarence Baldwin with him step for step. 35 seconds to go now in the half. Well, Dick Crum, you, you mentioned it. I said it before, a low-profile coach, this being a low-profile team, because really, Al, the two best players that they have are both linemen. The guys that have been getting the most of the ink are Fuller and, and Blatus. So th that's a hard sell. Second down and 10. And up the middle goes Eddie Colson who gets inside the 15-yard line. Now Carolina wants to line up and not spend the timeout. They want to save the timeout for a possible field goal if they have to. So the clock is running. They still have a timeout remaining, but they'll get this play off on third down and seven. And the penalty marker is down at the 14-yard line on the pass intended for Mark Smith. The clock now down to 15 seconds. And it's a procedure call against North Carolina. So. They wanted to get the playoff without taking the timeout, but in lining up, they weren't quite ready, and it will cost them five yards. Probably what's most characteristic of all of those coaches out of the cradle of coaches is that they really believe in fundamentals, and when they list their priorities, they talk about defense and the kicking game as the way you really win consistently. Then they talk about running the football and passing last. The call has been declined by uh, Maryland because they will rather they take the play. It costs uh, Carolina a down and makes it fourth down and forces them to attempt a field goal here instead of giving them another play. So it'll be spotted at the 21 to 31 yard kick upcoming for the straight ahead style kicker Brooks Barwick. And the kick is good. So their final drive of the half pays off with a field goal coming with 11 seconds remaining in the first half. And Maryland, which led 10 to nothing at the quarter, now trails 17 to 10 with 11 seconds remaining in the first half. So Bird Stadium was a, a noisy venue for the first 15 minutes, but uh, has been relatively quiet now as Carolina has uh, had the second period all to themselves. Reminder coming up, Battle of the Network Stars this Thursday night. Featuring uh, some of the stars from all three networks, including uh, Heather Locklear. I'll watch. Who they, who they are telling me is a terrific actress from T.J. Hooker and Dynasty. Battle of the Network Stars with the coach. Howard Cosell will be on hand to host it at 8 o'clock Eastern, 7 Central this Thursday night. That's nearly perfect. That's, that's a nearly perfect coach. <laughs> North Carolina to kick off. It, the series rubbed off. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Rob Rogers kicking off. Wind in his back. 
And it's fielded on the two-yard line and slipping down there. His knee went down, Tommy Neal, so uh, he has no option. College football, you can't get up. Your knee goes down, that's the end of the play. I think people watch so much professional football uh, on television that they assume that the guy should get up. But the college football, it doesn't work that way. You're down, you're down. And as far as Maryland is concerned right now, uh, they're not going to attempt any 97-yard uh, bomb into the wind. I think the science will be uh, quite content to run the clock out. Nine seconds remaining in the first half. Of course, now that I said that, they'll throw it 60 yards downfield. Against the wind, right. of course. No, you were right. No sense. I mean, all of the points have been scored downwind today. All 27. Wind blowing left to right. Meanwhile, Carolina figures, well, they'll take a timeout and force Maryland to run one more play. Because you don't know what can happen. Uh, you fumbled, snap, a lot of things can happen. Just ask the, uh, what, the New York Giants uh, against the Eagles a few years ago and Herman Edwards. So Carolina figures, why not? Make them run another play, see what happens. Who was the quarterback at the time? Uh, I'm trying to remember. It was Pisarcic, was it? Yes, Pisarcic, you're right. Carolina has just spent its last time out. North Carolina undefeated coming in. Seven wins, no losses. As far as the rest of their schedule, it'll be the final play now. As Esiason will just put his knee down, as he does, and the time will run out here in the first half. So Maryland led 10 to nothing at the quarter, but at the half at 17-10, North Carolina will return after this commercial and a message about an upcoming show and a word from our local stations. Ended ingloriously on this bad snap and a fumble recovery by the Terrapins. This was really the big play of the first quarter as number 29, Bob Gunderman, comes in and pounces on the loose football after the aforementioned bad snap, and that gave uh, Maryland perfect field position to set up this touchdown by tailback Willie Joyner and watch the blocking of Solt particularly and uh, Haraka on the left side as he starts outside, cuts back, does a spin and goes into the end zone for Maryland's first score. Atkinson added a field goal, made it 10-0, but then Carolina got on the board on this pass and good move by Mark Smith for the touchdown, 13 yards. Well, it's part of their quick passing game, and watch what Smith does so well here. He runs a quick out route and then comes back to the inside. He loses two defenders right there, a limp leg and a jukes chip, and he bounds into the end zone for a great score for the Heels. That made the score 10-7, to and Carolina took the lead on this pass to Griffin. Perfect timing. Larry Griffin has a tough catch to make here because he's on the fade route, and he has to look back into the sun, and there he is right there with a great catch. Barwick added a field goal at 17 to 10. All the points have been scored with the wind. Any surprises in the first half as far as you're concerned, Lee? No, actually, it was pretty much of a textbook game plan for both teams because we said it initially that we felt that Maryland would have to challenge North Carolina at the line of scrimmage. They did that very successfully in the first quarter. But then North Carolina came back and did what they do best in the second quarter. That's dominate with their tailback-oriented offense and particularly were able to control the line of scrimmage with their massive offensive front wall. Quickly, I think we'll see more of Horton. We saw Anthony almost the whole first half and tailback. Because of the fact that they got down, uh, they feel that Anthony is a better receiver, and so they used him more. I think now that they're in the lead, we're going to see Horton more in the second half. Should be a good second half upcoming from College Park. Carolina leading 17 to 10. We'll be right back. Michaels and Lee Grosskopf, College Park, Maryland, and the second half about ready to begin. Now in the second half, the wind, which is such a big factor today, gusting at close to 20 miles per hour, as you look at the stats, will be blowing at the back of uh, North Carolina. Look how things changed in the second quarter. Remember, at the end of the first quarter, North Carolina had only 37 yards rushing. Now they have taken charge. They're playing their kind of game. Look how the time of possession changed as a result of the uh, dominating ground game in the second quarter. And again, as was the case in the second quarter, now Maryland's going to receive, and they will go into the wind, Bill Maryland, as we begin the second half. And the kick by Rogers is five yards deep, and Neal's going to come out with it, and he gets out past the 20, and then fumbles the ball at the 22-yard line, and a big pile up there, and Maryland has it back. So Neal made a somewhat injudicious choice to begin with. He was pinned into the corner of the end zone. He came out, and then he's lucky that uh, Maryland winds up keeping possession. 
line for North Carolina defensively. There's the big man, William Fuller, All-America candidate. Ronnie Snipes does a nice job in the middle. Johnston has been hurt, battle saw a lot of action first half. Griffin, one linebacker. Mike Gamoon, number 37, along with Bill Shepard. First down, through the middle. And out to the 29 goes Willie Joyner. Gain of close to seven. Bill Shepard, number 23, made the tackle. Secondary for Carolina, Larry James, one corner. And they've got Walter Black, who also returns kicks on the other side. Willie Harris is a good one. All ACC in 1982. Steve Henderson, free safety out of Danville, Virginia. Second down, call it two from the 29-yard line. Boomer Esiason. Scrambles, penalty marker is down, and Esiason gets out to the 31. Close to what would have been a first down, but let's see, we might have a holding call on Badonic, number 40. What was happening is that Fuller was coming in, number 95, and putting the pressure, beginning to put the pressure on Esiason, and the only way Badonic could hold him off was to hold him, literally. That appears to be the call. Way to hold him is to hold him. Got to know when to hold him, no one to fold him, don't you? Could maybe develop a song out of that. Very possible. Soon to be a major motion picture. <laughs> Meanwhile, the Terps will be uh, pinned back inside the 20. Courtney Moss. Holding on the red. Second down. Maryland offense, Esiason, Madonic taking Daddio's place. Joyner is the big running back. Hill and Davis in the wideouts, and uh, they've been relatively silent. And they're the guys who lead the way up front. Second down and 12 after the penalty. From the 19-yard line, Esiason back to pass. And hit at the 23-yard line is Willie Joyner. Bill Shepard, perfect timing to whack him. Incomplete. Whack him and crack him. Bill Shepard, the leading tackler on the team, is in perfect position here on the coverage. Now, Boomer takes a five-step drop here. You see how cool he is. But look at that timing as Shepard comes in there. He's a former running back in high school. Good athlete. He and Micah Moon are the two inside linebackers in this 50 defense, and they really get the job done. Third down, 12, ball at the 19-yard line. Russell Davis is the man in motion. Messiason is under some pressure. Sets up the screen. It's Badonic. It's a block and gets out to the 35-yard line. So they turn a third and 12 into a first down, and Willie Joyner helped clear the way for him. Nice block by Joyner. This has been a very effective play this season for the Terps. They did it with Daddio first. It's a quick developing screen to the fullback. Now you see right now, Badonic already has a lane. Willie Joyner throws a key block that springs him. He goes up that lane, and now they have a first down. And that's the first down they have picked up going in this direction. Going into the wind. Just looking at the flags, the breeze uh, may be dying down a little bit here in the third period. First down from the 35-yard line. Play action to Siason going against the green and throws complete at the 40-yard line to Greg Hill. Tough pass for a left-handed quarterback to roll right, and he was right on the money with it. Misdirection play action. Now watch what Al was talking about, a left-hander running to his right. And a great catch along the sideline by Greg Hill. Greg Hill has tied the touchdown reception record previously uh, held by the great Gary Collins. First down from the 40-yard line. Esiason on the delay, giving it to Badonic, who moves to the outside. And he gets inside the 30 to the 29-yard line. But Donick's not what you call a pretty runner. He's a functional runner. Talked about him before, 5'9", 206. Doesn't like, look like he's moving anywhere. But he's picking up some very key yardage for him here. None of these plays are particularly different from anything that they have run throughout the season. 
we uh, we saw some of these plays on film yesterday but they're executing better. Obviously the momentum has changed several times thus far in the football game. First down Maryland they have it at the Carolina 29. Tar Heels lead 17 10 early in the third period. Joiner reverse. reverse to Hill coming back the other way with blocking inside the 20 to the 16 yard line. And Bird Stadium has really come alive now. Mike the Moon making the stop again to 13 and the first down at the 16 and we're looking at it from the ground. Here's a reverse from a low angle and it looks initially like it's going to be a sweep and then the give to Greg Hill number four coming around he comes up the lane he makes a good move toward the end zone Glover number 70 is the man who finally brings him down or makes a good block to spring uh, Greg Hill first down Joiner is the eye back Badonic is the up back first and 10 from the 16 Joiner so Dennis Barron in the middle number 92 a freshman out of Wilson North Carolina making the stop along with Mike Kaboom you mentioned the noise levels it got very quiet here in the second quarter now it is really starting to go crazy here in Bird Stadium there seems to have been a little bit of a jinx for Maryland whenever the crowd gets over 50,000 they seem to lose and they would like to break that jinx today oh my Second down at nine. Esiason rolling and looking and throwing and incomplete. Russell Davis was running out of room. The coverage was very good and the pressure was also on Esiason. You see again though that Boomer can throw on the dead run going to his right which is tough for a, a left handed passer. As you see his numbers reflected there five of thirteen. This is a, a combination route. Hill coming to the inside, Davis going back to the outside, and then Hill, too, comes back outside. And that was very close to being a touchdown. Good coverage that time by the Heels. Key play here coming up for Maryland. They're down by seven, third and nine. From the 15-yard line. Straight drop, Esiason. Double clutches, then throws to Badonic, who gets inside the five. Direct Badonic. From the, 15. The double clutch you talked about is what really sets this up. A pump fake sets it up so that Badonic can come around the linebacker, catch the ball, and then he's got a lane to the end zone right there as this crowd has gone crazy here in Bird Stadium in the third quarter. Jess Atkinson. With Esiason holding, and they fake. They're going to go for two, and Esiason throws, and it's good for two. Chris Knight. So Boomer Esiason, who had 54 yards passing on the drive, throws his fifth conversion pass. He had done that four previous times in his career. And so that was a real gutsy play that time by the Terps. And they lead now. 1870. Watch the pump fake here by Esiason that sets up this quick screen. See? Right there. The pump fake, that sets it up for Badonic, and he's able to make one quick move inside, back outside. Good block by Benson, number 61, springs him. And then they fake the conversion. Instead, go for two. That pays off, and the Terps lead by one with 11.14 to go in the third quarter. White, how amazing he was in 1974. Outland and Vince Lombardi Trophy. 
Liberty Bowl MVP and the ACC Player of the Year. He set a strength record here back in 1974 by bench pressing 450 pounds. Who broke it just recently? Let's see how you are, Coach. Well, one of their, uh, one of the guys on the, uh, on the offensive line, as I recall. Pete Koch, was it? Pete Koch. He was the guy. 475 pounds. Peter Koch. Meanwhile, you caught a glimpse of the tight end, Chris Knight, who caught that two-point conversion. Now Atkinson to kick off, and he is kicking into the wind. High hanging kick that floats down and is taken by Mark Smith at the eight, and Smith gets out past the 25, 30, and runs out of bounds at the 37-yard line. Run out by Bob Gunderman. Sports quiz. Discretion is the better part of what? Something to do with valor. What do I want? A trip to Maui or what? Here today, gone to Maui. Right. Numbers on the Terrapins drive. And they did it into the win. That's the first touchdown scored right to left today. Now Carolina, first possession, second half. And it's Anthony who takes it out to the 40-yard line, and he is stopped by Peter Koch. So Anthony, who uh, saw most of the action in the first half, we saw Horton come in on the last series, starts the second half with a gain of about three. Look at those numbers. That is incredible. 76 zip in the second half. In three games, but they've already given up seven now, or eight, in fact in the second half today. Second down and seven from the 40-yard line, and it's Anthony again. Gain of a two and a half to three out to the 43-yard line, and Jimmy Joyce, number 99, makes the stop. What was impressive about that drive is that for the first time, they were able to establish something going against the win. As I mentioned before, just looking at the flags, that wind has died down somewhat since the first half. Twilight here. Temporary lighting begins to take effect. Third down and four from the 43-yard line. Stan Cabbage, and it's dropped. That would have been a first down had Franklin held on. He was right there by the stick. Can't hold on. And thus, North Carolina is forced to pick with Maryland on top 18 to 17 and nine minutes and 50 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Tommy Barnhart to do the kicking. Good high long kick fielded by Krause at the 10 and he can't go anywhere. So Krause is Dropped at the 10 yard line. Good kick, 46 yards, 9.39 to go, third period. And the Terrapins lead 18 to 17. In the twilight in College Park, Maryland, getting chilly. Temperature uh, was up around 60, 62 degrees at game time. And, uh, I'm sure we're down in the low 50s right now. Maryland has the ball at the 10, first and 10. They lead 18 to 17. Boomer Esiason turns and gives the ball to Padonic. Out to the 16-yard line goes Padonic. Stopped by Walter Black. Again for late tuners in. The number one fullback for Maryland, Dave Daddio, injured, separated shoulder last week. Thus, Padonic, who had been seeing a good deal of action in the reserve role, was moved to the first team, first team fullback slot and uh, played a very key role on that last drive. Second down and four from the 16-yard line. Some movement, you can see it, left tackle. Number 57 was the man, Greg Haraka, lifted up, and that'll cost him five yards. Left better. tackle number 57, Greg Haraka, 6'2", 257. You see that little touch of movement there. He tried to get back. Thought maybe he could sneak one in, but he got caught in the cookie jar. Bobby Ross facing the sideline. Second year here. Took over. The 
before the start of the 1982 season. We've got a penalty marker with Joyner carrying. And Fuller is the man who stops him. And a marker was thrown at the inception of the play at the 11-yard line. Looked like Haraka might have moved again. Could be. Procedure against Maryland. Boomer wants to know what happened that time. Man's a little jumpy here in the second half. Might have to might have to decaffeinate him. Numbers on the side. <laughs> How do you come up with this stuff? <laughs> Recesses of the mind. Right. A lot of, a lot of cell damage through the air. Copper got sacked <laughs> once too often back in Utah. <laughs> Third down and eight with a ball at the 12-yard line. <laughs> and again, you've got, you're going to have another procedure call. This is Badonic. It was a long count. You could see Badonic that time rising up. So for the third play in a row, Maryland is out of sync. Interesting game, isn't it? The way they can look so sharp on that last drive, and uh, they can't even snap the ball without getting a penalty here on three successive plays. Is this the ebb or is this the flow? Yeah, it's, it's, this is the recesses. <laughs> <laughs> the official call is uh, illegal motion on the last play. It has been declined. They'll take the down, will Carolina, and that will force Carroll into punt. So the Terrapins lining up quickly to punt. Alan Sadler from Camp Springs, Maryland. That's Walter Black at midfield. Black at the 49-yard line. Sadler. Uh-oh. Very high kick and a fair catch called for and made by Black at the 47-yard line. And so Carolina will be in good position now. At the 47 of the Terps after a 33-yard kick. 7.56 remaining third period. Maryland by one. Maryland 18, North Carolina 17. Seven minutes, 56 seconds remaining third period. And this drive starts for the Tar Heels at the Maryland 47-yard line. Stan Tappage has gone all the way to quarterback. Anthony has gone most of the way at tailback, and he picks up the yard here. Stopped in the middle by Eric Wilson, number 55. Brian Bladus right here. It has been said of this man that he could go one-on-one -on -one with Godzilla. Look at him. 6'5", 300 pounds. He literally takes two guys out on the play. This may be the biggest and most efficient offensive line that the Tar Heels have ever had. And that's saying something because they're noted for big offensive lines. Definitely a horse and a half. Second down and nine, and it's intercepted at the 31-yard line by Clarence Baldwin. Fumble! And drops the ball, and it's recovered by Brian Baker, who just happens to be there. So Maryland gets it right back at the 30-yard line. At the 35-yard line is where they'll spot it. Smith intended, intended for number 45, Mark Smith. Clarence Baldwin, number 23, who ranks nationally in pass interceptions. He had five coming into today's game. Steps right in there and gets a key interception. Now watch what happens right here. The ball is stripped away by Arnold Franklin. And here comes Brian Baker, number two, to pounce on the football. From the 35, Esiason will go right to the air. Over the middle is complete after the 45-yard line to Bill Rogers and very close to a first down. Willie Harris made the stop. There again is Clarence Baldwin out of Hyattsville, Maryland. And that's his sixth interception of the season. The Terrapin himself doing some dancing. As things have gone Maryland's way here in the third period. That means that he has taken over the lead in the ACC for pass interceptions. Number six on the season for him. It was a first down on the first and ten. They give it a joiner. Nice hole. He gets into Tar Heel territory and is stopped at the 47-yard line by Hendrickson and James. 
So an interesting game. First quarter was all Maryland. Second quarter was all North Carolina. Third quarter has been all Maryland. How the emotional energy has changed. It has literally flip-flopped in every quarter. But what is really interesting now is that for the first time we see a team going against the wind, moving the football with some consistency. Second down, a yard and a half from the 46-yard line. Russ Davis in motion, straight ahead to the first man. Drew, that's Pagonic, and he has the first down as he gets to the Tar Heel 43-yard line. 6.02 remaining, third period. Out west now, Air Force leading Army by 15 in the fourth quarter. Lobos on top by 17. Big battle there, possible Rose Bowl stake. Washington on top of UCLA by four. Washington State leading Oregon seven to nothing. Is that up in the Palouse country or is that uh, in Eugene? I don't know where that game is. SC trying to rebound, leading Cal 13 to nothing. First down now for Maryland at the 43-yard line. Davis in motion again. Messiah in off the play fake and rolling left and has some room in front of him. Decides to pass and in and out of the hands of Davis as the pass floated down. Second down upcoming. Russell Davis is 6'5". He has the size you like. Good speed. He's a strider. Now what he's going to do here is that he sees Boomer in trouble and he takes off deep. Now momentarily he looks open, but here comes the coverage by Walter Black and Micah Moon, number 39, and the ball is stripped away from him. Boomer Esaias in 7 out of 16 for 94 yards. Second down and 10 at the 43-yard line. Reverse, Russ Davis on the end around in reality, and he gets to the 39-yard line where Walter Black makes the stop, and it will be third down and about six. He ran about 20 yards to make one. The third down, six yards to go. At the 39-yard line, five minutes, five seconds remaining, third period. Maryland on top, 18 to 17. Two teams are unbeaten in conference play. Davis is the man in motion. Esiason looking for that first down. He fakes and throws complete to the 20-yard line. his first catch of the day. Sean Sullivan, the wide receiver on the right, number 89, runs a deep square in route. Now he looks and then looks again, and Boomer Esiason really threw about a 30-yard rope that time. Good, hard, low pass. First down, Terrapins at the 21-yard line. First and 10. Straight ahead, a functional six, and it's second down and four. Rick Badonik out of West Farmington, Ohio. He's a sophomore. He's the man they like to go to when they get down toward the goal line. 12 carries, 59 yards for Rick Badonik now, and he's also been effective as a receiver. Second down, four from the 15. Now it's Joyner back of Badonic, and he gets close to the 11-yard line and uh, very close to a first down. And it is a first down. So we have had two textbook drives here in the third quarter against the wind by the Turks. A nice combination of uh, runs, play action passes, drop back passes, really the multiplicity and flexibility of the offense of Bobby Ross. He has mixed it up. He has opened up the offense, and that has been advantageous for quarterback Boomer Esiason. Now double tight ends. First down from just outside the 10-yard line. Joiner wrapped up at about the eight. He could conceivably get a first down without a touchdown as this started just outside the 10-yard line. It'll be second down and uh, 
Seven and a half, eight to go for the first. At about the eight-yard line with three minutes remaining, third period. Number Zaire Joyner, who last year, of course, ran for 240 yards. 212 in the second half. Against North Carolina and did it in Chapel Hill. And won 84 to break a tie in the fourth period. Second and eight. Joiner to the six. Shepard and Jackson make the stop. Third down and about five and a half for the first and six for the touch. What was amazing about that 80-yard winning touchdown run by Willie Joyner is that he was almost dropped eight yards behind the line of scrimmage. Walter Black had a chance to tackle him. 206, 205 and counting down. Also, Maryland has to be delighted by the fact that they played this whole period into the wind. They have the wind at their backs now in the fourth quarter. They pitch it to Joyner on third and six, and they stop Joyner near the two-yard line. Willie Harris bumped him out of bounds, all right? Now, if you're a coach and you're on the sidelines, make your decision and make it quick. What are you going to do? Go for three? Go for seven right now. Willie Joyner, the tailback number 34, gets it on the power pitch, student body right. Now watch the cut, and watch as Look at that effort right there by Steve Hendricks in number five, who slashes through. He and Willie Harris really give a shot to Joyner along the sidelines as he now has 18 carries for a total of 60 yards. Well, if you're a coach right now, uh, you don't have to make the decision that quickly. What you do is you call timeout, as Bobby Ross just did, and he will think this one over. Because here's the situation. You have fourth down. The ball's at the two-yard line. As I say, you can get, they can get a first down conceivably without the touchdown as the drive of the series started just outside the 10. But in essence, it's fourth and, and goal. You lead by a point. You're going into the win. I think if I'm Ross, I go for it here. I go for the touchdown, Lee. What do you think? I like the idea of going for a touchdown, and I'll tell you how I do it is that they've been effective with their uh, their tailback plays and their misdirection plays and boomer being the type of guy with a, a little bit of movement if they go to some type of rollout off of play action i think it gives him an excellent opportunity to either run or pass for the score now that we've said all that they're going to attempt to field goal. Gonna, absolutely they do it every time <laughs> if you notice that well maybe we don't know you know the atkinson lined up to kick the extra point before the next thing you know it was a two-point conversion remember that boomer is very effective at faking these so atkinson at an angle with a chip shot 20-yard field goal attempt and they go through with it and the kick is good so Ross obviously did not want to see a long drive wasted and squandered and come up empty. He settles for three. Maryland now leads 21-17, a minute 49 to go in the period. Well, this game has uh, very much lived up to expectations. It was a tough game to figure. It figured to be very close, and it has been. And it seesawed, and it's been very interesting, and it has the makings of... Uh, being something that uh, people will remember for quite a while. It's uh, been that sort of a game to this point with Maryland on top by four. 21 to 17, one minute, 49 seconds remaining in the third period. I know you want to call it a barn burner. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I don't. No. I take a couple of rows of the cornfield with it, though. It might. Atkinson to kick off into the wind. Mark Smith. Out past the 15, the 20. Fumble! Fumbles, and it's recovered by the Terrapins at the 29-yard line by the man who picked off, Atkinson. Oh, period has been all Maryland. Smith, the wide receiver and return man for the heels, looks momentarily like he's going to break this one, Al. Look at the opening he has. But right here, he loses the ball on his own, and then the kicker, Atkinson, comes along with perfect timing and picks it up. So first down now for Maryland at the 30-yard line. Joiner gets tripped up. Well, I tell you, if he gets by uh, Aaron Jackson, he might 
might go all the way. Jackson tripped them up after a gain of about eight, a minute and a half remaining in the third period. How about that? That's pretty unusual to see a kicker come along and scoop up a fumble. Very few times that I can remember ever seeing that. Especially when you're 5'9", normally you're back on the bench by the time it plays over. <laughs> I think if I was 5'9", I'd run and hide. high. Second down. And let's call it three from the 24-yard line. Esiason, that's nice protection. Man wide open. And a touchdown to Sean Sullivan. The pro scouts are so interested in Boomer Esiason. Watch this. That ball's going about 40 yards on a line. And Sean Sullivan is there. He has beaten the, the secondary, and he waits for the pass in the end zone for the touchdown. So Atkinson attempts the point after now out of the hold by Esiason, and the kick is good. Three extra points for Atkinson today, 74 straight. Maryland, an ACC record holder in that department. There's the man who scored the touchdown, Sullivan. He's caught two balls today and 54 seconds to play in what's been a nightmarish third quarter for Carolina. It's 28-17. Sean Sullivan all alone here. Now watch what he does. He's running into zone coverage, and there's a breakdown in the coverage. The safety man doesn't get over in time. The play action freezes him. He has to wait for the ball, but look at this. That ball comes in with a lot of velocity, and it's thrown into the wind. 40-yard rope. Great play by the Turks. So Maryland has scored 18 points here in the third period. Unanswered against the win. They had led 10-0, and Carolina scored 17 straight points. Led at the half, 17-10. Now Maryland's come back with 18, and the Turks lead by 11. Boomer is now 9 out of 18 for 136 yards and two touchdowns, and Atkinson will kick off. This was forecast as the game of the year way back during the preseason. All of the football magazines, almost everyone who covers Atlantic Coast Conference football said that this would be the game of the year. Indeed, it has been. Both teams coming in unbeaten in conference play. Atkinson's kick floats down and is fielded on the run at the seven-yard line by Smith, and he gets out to the 24. Gomer Esiason from Long Island makes his home in West Islip, New York. All right, everybody wants to know in, in Tupelo, Mississippi, how did he get the nickname Boomer? Pepper, how did he get it? He literally was kicking inside his mother's womb. And uh, his uh, father started asking, uh, how's the little boomer doing? And that nickname stuck. It did. Now, how did the, he get the number seven? He ain't lying. He loves Bert Jones. That's right. Jones has always been his idol. Meanwhile, Carolina with Stan Cavage from the 23-yard line, throwing to Smith, and he's out of bounds at the 30. Meanwhile, the Carolina possessions, as you can see, it was a stumbling start for them. But then when they had the wind at their backs, TD, TD field goal. But with the wind at their backs here in the third period, punt, interception, and then the fumble, and they're in trouble. This is exactly what Bobby Ross had hoped for when we talked to him yesterday. Second down and four. Stan Cabbage and Smith this time has it at the 36-yard line. Lendell Jones makes the tackle, and that's enough for a first down. Maryland leading 28-17. That wind is starting to pick up again. And when they turn around here at uh, Bird Stadium, they'll be going into it in the fourth period. There are no uh, permanent lights, by the way, at Bird Stadium, as uh, those of you around the area know. But uh, the Musco Lighting Company from Iowa, uh, they brought the... Uh, their lamps in, and it's, uh, it's a quite a sight. It really is to walk into these stadiums week after week as we do and see the job that they can do with temporary lighting. First down from the 36-yard line. Ethan Horton is back in the game. He 
works his way out to the 44-yard line on what uh, will be the final play of the third quarter. And so when the fourth quarter commences, it will be second down and two for Carolina. But uh, the third period belongs to the Turks. 28-17 as we go to the fourth. And we'll be back after this commercial message and a word from your local station. Well, the four fingers means, according to Maryland, they think the fourth period will be theirs. The third period certainly was. As we go to the fourth, Al Michaels and Lee Groskup with you at Bird Stadium in College Park, Maryland. Maryland 28, North Carolina 17. It is second down two for Carolina from their own 44-yard line. Stan Cabbage gives the ball off to the tailback, Ethan Horton. The junior from Kannapolis, North Carolina, who has played quite sparingly today. They have gone with Anthony almost the entire way. It's a first down for Horton. First down at the 47-yard line. North Carolina coming in third ranked in both polls, 7-0. Maryland 10th and 1, 13th in the other. Six and one, the only loss to West Virginia, week two. First down from the 46-yard line. Stan Cavage looking and throwing, and he had two receivers there and finds one at the 34 in Mark Smith. Smith was there, and also Earl Winfield was in the area. And Stan Cavage takes a shot. Meanwhile, we've got Winfield isolated. Winfield alone out here but he's in a combination route now Stan Cabbage is sprinting to his left and he's looking for whoever is open in the combination route and they wind up together the man who catches the ball is number 45 Mark Smith but that ball was really thrown with authority on the dead run moving to his left first down Carolina at the Terrapin 34 yard line and the pass is caught by Larry Griffin who scored a touchdown in the first half out he goes at the 30, and we'll look at the numbers through the first 45 minutes. We've talked so much about the ebb and flow of the game, and look how it has turned around again in the third quarter. 277 total yards to 213 now as Maryland take charge of the, takes charge of the game. And look again how the time of possession has changed around. So it's been three different quarters. Second down and six at the 30. Stan Cavage throwing to Horton, first down. To the 19-yard line goes Ethan. Brian Baker and Eric Wilson make the stop. Plays shuttled in by Coach Dick Crum. However, Stan Cavage probably audibilizes more than any quarterback that they have had. He really has the, the freedom. He has more freedom probably because of his intelligence. Down North Carolina at the 19. Just the start of the fourth period. Maryland leading 28 to 17. On first and 10, pitch it to Horton at 6'4, 218 pounds. He works his way down to the 16, a gain of three. It'll be second down seven. Scott Stan Cavage who saw quite a bit of action in a reserve role over the past three years. He's been the backup to Rod Elkins. They give him a lot of credit for what's happened thus far this season. They feel that he's the best stand-up passer that they've had in a long time. Elkins was more of a scrambler, but Stan Cabbage, really a high percentage passer, throws the intermediate stuff best, but he's a good move man, and he's good with play action, very intelligent and resourceful. That's Horton now on second down and seven, who chugs his way down to about the 11-yard line. Ethan Horton, who played hardly at all in the first half, we mentioned, we talked about this at halftime, they felt that Tyrone Anthony is a better receiver, and since the team got down, that they might have to do more passing. Now it doesn't seem to matter, though, because uh, even though they're trailing in the game, they are running. So I think what they would like to do is that they would like to get a touchdown now and then get the ball back and systematically churn it down for one more touchdown, and then they would win the football game. No need to panic. Plenty of time. They're moving well. Third down a yard and a half. And 
stopped at the 10 yard line is Horton. It's going to be very close to a first down. Depending on the spot by the official. Horton, as we told you earlier, but if you're joining us late, actually emerged in this very game two years ago when he was a freshman, recruited originally as a quarterback. Uh, he came to life in this game and then was the hero of the, the game that was never seen. The Fog Bowl, the Gator Bowl that you covered with Eric Parsigi in the end of 1981. And then he had a, a Snow Bowl game in the Sun Bowl against Texas. Meanwhile, it is fourth down and less than one. They're going to go for it, but they want to talk about it. So timeout, North Carolina, 12-0-1 to go in the game. Maryland leads by 11. Maryland 28, North Carolina 17. 12 minutes, one second remaining in the game. And up come the Tar Heels for fourth and inches now at the 10-yard line. They give it to Horton and no problem for him. He gets the inches and about a yard more. This follows the line in. On the back of uh, Truett. Aaron and Blados, and it's a first down. First down and goal to go for Carolina at the eight-yard line. 11 minutes, 50 seconds left in the game. Carolina came in as a three to four-point choice. Maryland leads by 11. Horton again, out of the four-yard line. He can fall forward for two yards. 6'4", 218 pounds. Carolina the favorite. However, there's an interesting sign down in the opposite end zones. It says, except for this week, Carolina plays a week-to-week -week schedule. And that week is spelled W-E-A-K. And so there was some speculation about the fact that maybe the Heels hadn't played anybody yet to really uh, uh, get them ready for the, uh, the Terrapins. Well, they're the first to admit it, but uh, the people there right now sort of inherited the schedule. the expression the ballet of the secondary now watch Lendell Jones because it looks momentarily that Truett the tight end is going to be open now look how Lendell Jones flies through the air and bats the ball away perfect timing on the effort by Jones who has probably been the best athlete in the secondary for the Terps third down and goal now from the four 10 59 remaining in the game the Terps have been the most effective team in terms of rushing defense with their wide tackle six look. Warwick, 22-yard attempt from the 12. Spot's good, and the kick is good. So the drive box down, and they settle for three. They trail by eight. 10-16 to go in the game, Maryland 28. North Carolina 20. And 16 seconds. Remaining in the game, Lendell Jones, man of the moment for the Maryland defense, breaking up what appeared to be a sure touchdown pass to Dave Truitt. So Carolina, after the field goal, will be kicking off. Turned into a, uh, a brisk and chilly early evening under the temporary lighting on the campus of the University of Maryland. Back deep to receive. Tommy Neal, number 48. You saw him standing at the five-yard line. Kick goes in his direction, and he'll take it out from two yards in. To the 10. Through the middle he comes, and then he started to lose his balance. Otherwise, he might have sprung it. 
stopped at the 24-yard line. Started to fall forward after he'd gotten by the initial would-be tacklers. All right, Nebraska rolls. No problem there. That figured. They went by 26. Texas had no problem with Texas Tech, winning by 17. Big one there. Auburn over Florida. Georgia wins. They beat Temple. Check out some other scores as the fourth period progresses. First down for Maryland from the 24-yard line. Adonik was gang tackled. This for a minimal game. This will be an interesting drive for the Terps because they can't afford to sit on a lead right now. But on the other end, they, they should play it relatively conservatively. Other scores, you saw the Illinois victory. Champagne and Champagne tonight. Adonik goes out. Berkovich now comes in. Pittsburgh, close one over Syracuse. Dartmouth the winner. Hino winner. And Harvard over Brown. Second down and nine. Esiason trying to set up a screen to the short side, and that's Berkovich, who had just come into the game, making the catch and run out by Butch Griffin, number 83, with nine minutes and 31 seconds remaining in the game. Interesting story in the Big Ten with... Uh, Mike White's Illinois team probably Rose Bowl bound. They were picked fourth or lower by most forecasters during the preseason. And so they were in a, they were the dark horse candidate in the Big Ten and they've come on very strong. The Donick is back in. Third down and eight from the 26 yard line. Esiason off the fake, pumps, then throws, going deep down the sideline, out of bounds. Because <laughs> that's, oh. a, that's a scene you don't see very often either. <laughs> Greg Hill. Right in the kicker's net. Right into the kicking net. Tennessee winning. Mississippi beating LSU by three. Boy, that's a rivalry. Mm -hmm. You ever cover that game? Nope. LSU Ole Miss? You talk about scratching and clawing. Meanwhile, on fourth down, it's Sadler to do the pumping. Wind in his back. High kick, good distance. Fielded at the 28-yard line and returned out to the 35 by Walter Black. 46-yard punt, 9-13 remaining. Carolina getting the ball back. We'll have for you next Saturday, along with college football on ABC, gymnastics, the Dublin Mile, World Speedway Motorcycle Championship. The Gross Cup trying out for that regional competition, but not making it all the way to the finals. <laughs> Maryland 28 and North Carolina 20. With nine minutes and 13 seconds remaining in the game, Carolina has the ball at its own 34-yard line as they begin this drive. Stan Cavett starts by going straight back, throwing over the middle, and complete out to the 42-yard line of Arnold Franklin, who wrestles his way further forward, but they spot it at the 42. That's where his knee went down. Arnold Franklin, the tight end, takes a little outside release and finds his way over the middle. The ball's actually thrown behind him. He reaches back and then spins off two or three tacklers, including Eric Wilson, number 55, and Bobby DePaul, number 38, as he picks up valuable yardage right there. Second down and a long yard from the 43. Boy, springing it inside the 40, and he gets inside the 25 to the 22-yard line. Lendell Jones caught him. Well, he is deceptive. He got through there, and the next thing you know, he was almost gone. Ethan Horton, who I described at the top of the show as a slashing type runner. Now watch him right here. He starts to his left on the isolation plate. Now right here is where he makes his move. That's to the outside, and he's being pursued by number six, Lendell Jones, who finally drags him down along the right sideline. Look how fast he's moved up here in the second half. Look at those numbers, 13 for 75. That gain was 35 yards, and all of a sudden, the ball is at the Maryland 22-yard line on first down. And it's Eddie Colson who gains five to the 17-yard line. Now, I asked you the question while we were away, Al, and you kind of laughed at it. But if they score right now, do they go for the one or do they go for the two? I think you, you have to go for the two. I mean, you just like, you can't assume you're going to score again. 
If it's uh, 28 to but, 20, but on the other hand, yeah, uh, you score right now, and it's 28 27. You get the ball back, and then a field goal still wins but it. For a field goal wins it anyway, though. Even if it's 28 to 26, it's still going to win it for you. Second down and six. Well, I didn't major in math. <laughs> Neither did OJ. To the end zone and incomplete intended for Mark Smith. Clarence Baldwin was covering on the play, but the pass just a bit overthrown. <laughs> Mark Smith, number 45, is running a route he ran earlier. Coverage by Clarence Baldwin, and he had nearly a touchdown right there. Had that ball been thrown with a little so I think they would have had a touchdown. Numbers there for Stan Cabbage. It's third down. Four. It's a long four from the 16. Stan Cabbage going into traffic. And do they get a penalty call? No. He was double teamed, was Griffin. In the corner of the end zone. Looked like contact might have been made uh, a tad early, but no call. Baker and Baldwin come in in the area there with him. So, gang, you've got uh, fourth down at the 16. You're talking about a 33-yard field goal attempt, and that's what Dick Crum is thinking right now. As Barwick comes in, at an angle now, far hash mark, 23-yard line, think of the 22. Stan Cabbage will spot it there. 32-yard attempt. The breeze is tied down. He's, he'll kick into the wind, but it's not that much of a factor right now. The kick is long enough, and it is no good, however. It's to the right. To the right. So Barwick's kick is wide with 7.34 remaining in the game, and Maryland is able to maintain an eight point advantage. Big play right there. Watch the reaction of Barwick as he finishes, and he can see right away. Well, actually, we're looking at the holder there. That's more than Barwick. The reaction wasn't particularly positive, as you can well imagine. 7.34 remaining in the game. Terps by eight. We'll be right back. First down, Maryland at the 20-yard line. Esiason to Joyner. He fakes the reverse. He keeps. And he has a first down. Fights his way out to the 31-yard line. Some other scores now. Notre Dame on a roll these days. Ohio State takes care of the Badgers. Iowa takes it out on Indiana. Purdue in the fourth period leading Northwestern. Michigan State back on the winning track against hapless uh, Minnesota. Oklahoma, an easy time of it with Kansas. And Oklahoma State takes care of Colorado. Missouri, a winner over Iowa State. First and 10, Terrapins from the 31-yard line. Joiner the eye back. He gets seven. Crowd loves it because not only are they picking up yardage, but this is exactly what you want to do right now. You want to take that clock and run it down as much as you can. 6.49 to go. Baylor wins by six over Tulane. Houston over TCU by seven. Shootout right there. Whoa, looky there. Yep. Air Force over Army, final score. And Colorado State comes from behind. With UCLA now leading Washington, 2017, fourth quarter. Second and three. Joiner again. Runs into some traffic, but is able to get out to the 41-yard line. He might have a first. Larry James. Runs him out. Willie Joyner, how he's come on here. You know, he was the hero of this game last year, as you talked about, documented at the top of the show. 240 yards, 212 in the second half. He's got 88 yards today in 22 carries. Ultimately, of course, we're going to be choosing the uh, MVP for both teams. Chevrolet's player of the game, MVP for both teams. I like Boomer, though, right now for the third. The way he uh, performed in the third period in particular, that's been the difference in the game right now. First down from the 41-yard line. 
It's Russell Davis, the man in motion. They give it to Joyner again. Skirts his way to the 45-yard line. One thing that Joyner has to think about, too, they're working that short side of the field if you lose him to stay in bounds as he did there. And UCLA, final score, beats Washington 27-24. to So the Bruins take a major step toward Pasadena. Well, they're already in Pasadena, but you know what I mean. Washington <laughs> State <laughs> leads Oregon by 17. SC by 10, fourth period over Cal. I thought the, I thought the bear would not die. Look That's at, right. Joe, Joe Cap, his team uh, not performing particularly well today. Second down and seven from the 44-yard line. Joiner out to the 46-yard line. Clock is running with five and a half now to go in the game. So Joiner closing in on a hundred-yard day and uh, perhaps a thousand-yard season before it's all over. Third down and five. It's a pretty big play coming up right here because uh, it may not seem that critical, but if you get that first down, you can chew up another two and a half, three minutes. A little over five minutes to go in the game. Third down and five. And it's Joyner, and he's got the first down as he takes it to the Carolina 46-yard line, and that will enable them to do just as we said, chew up more of that clock, which is now down to 4.57. Joiner again, the uh, the guy who really tore it up for him last year. 240 yards in this game for a single game record for the Terps. 212 of it coming in the second half. He started slow today, but now he has 25 carries for 99 yards. Best way to enjoy the game right there. Get to see the replays and the whole bit. First down from the 46-yard line. Madonic, he gets to the 45-yard line. Minimal gain, second down, call it eight. Clock running, 420 remaining in the game. As far as timeouts are concerned, Carolina has two remaining. Scoreboard list Maryland is having three, but I remember they took one earlier in the half. That's wrong. Should have two. Second down, eight at the 45-yard line. And a whistle after the snap, there was a whistle. Perhaps a delay of the game. Let's see. Yep. Delay a game, that'll cost them five. Stan Cabbage, uh, hopeful of getting back in in a position where he can uh, do some damage. But right now, it's Maryland uh, controlling the ball, the clock, and the score, as you can see. Second down, 13 from the 50. Delay to Madonic. It's to the 48-yard uh, line, so it'll be third down and about 11. Dick Crum, his team undefeated, meeting its uh, stiffest test of the season by far, and in a dogfight right now. Three and a half to go. Frustrated countenance right there because, really, the Terps are taking a page out of his playbook. He believes in ball control running, and they have been very effective in the last five minutes chewing up time by utilizing the running game. Third down and 11, and Esiason looking for the first down and looking downfield, steps up in the pocket, and has some room, and then he's tripped up and stopped at the 43-yard line. For a moment, it looked like he might be able to uh, pick up enough yardage, but Butch Griffin came up, number 83, to trip him. And thus, Maryland will be forced to kick, and uh, optimally for the Terps, uh, they'll be able to put the ball in the coffin corner and pin North Carolina as deep as possible. 245, 244, 243, clock running down. Maryland on top by eight. That's Walter Black back to receive the kick. Alan Sadler will most likely attempt to put it into the corner if he can. Meanwhile, what they'll do here is they will take a delay of the game because uh, they'll eat up as much of the clock as possible. And when you're kicking from 
that area, five yards really doesn't matter at all. In fact, uh, off times it helps you to be five yards further back. Give you more room for error if you don't make the corner. So you're trying to tell me it was smart. Yeah, in essence. <laughs> Fill in air time, what can I tell you? <laughs> well, you're an old radio man. You don't like dead air, right? That's right. <laughs> Sadler's kick is angled toward this side, but doesn't get quite that far. And Black Fields at the 15, brings it out to the 21, and a penalty marker is thrown. Flag is down. So we'll see about the call. 33-yard punt. And the penalty is against North Carolina. Meanwhile, Mr. Joyner thinks he's number one. Yeah, and his team, and uh, 99 yards, 25 carries, just shy of a four-yard average today for him. He told me yesterday he's always admired Walter Payton, and when I watch him run, I see some of those Walter Payton qualities in it. And the number would reflect the, the fact that he's enjoyed Walter over the years. Two minutes and 18 seconds remaining, as you can see. Meanwhile, they are marking off the penalty, which will be assessed against North Carolina. Call is delay of game. It moves it back to the 10. And so here comes Carolina now with 90 yards to go, and then they got to think about a two-pointer for a top. 2.18 on the clock, and a pair of timeouts left. Stan Tavage goes over the middle, out past the 20 to the 27-yard line, goes Arnold Franklin, the tight end. So they get out of the shadow of the goalpost anyway. They have some breathing room now. Two timeouts left, and they're into their hurry-up offense. So they're going to use a combination of, uh, of timeouts, sideline passes, and no huddle offense. From the 27-yard line, dumped to Horton. Horton now past the 40-yard line to the 41-yard line. And that's a first down. By the way, if you don't follow college football that closely and wonder about why the referee says stop the clock after a first down, it is stopped temporarily, as you can see there. But then it is restarted again. There it is right there as soon as the ball is marked ready for play. From the 41-yard line, it is behind Hort. Off his hand in the second and ten. That rule is also true in the United States Football League, but not in the NFL. And what it does is it uh, it prolongs the game. It's uh, one of the reasons that uh, they were able to run off so many more plays yep. in college football than in the NFL. Second and ten, a minute 51 remaining. Maryland on top, 28 to 20. complete to Franklin and he has a lot of open space and exploits it down to the 26 yard line. Clarence Baldwin was there. Once Franklin got loose and the initial tackle was missed and coverage blown. Big, big right play there for the heels because they're down knocking at the door now. From the 27 and they moved in a hurry. It's Horton inside the 20 and he's going to go out of bounds at the 19-yard line. So it's been a picture-perfect drive, but Horton is hurt. He's shaken up on that last play as he crumbled on the, on the uh, sideline. In fact, he's still down. There he is. So an official's timeout here. Meanwhile, it's been, a, it's been a perfect drive for Carolina because they've, they've chewed up big hunks of yardage. They've taken very little time, relatively speaking, off the clock, and they have not had to use one of their two timeouts. Stan Cabbage has been hot on this drive, and he's now 18 of 32 for 203 yards and two touchdowns. And I guess, well, we'll come back on something. Finish the thought in a moment. A minute 31 to go. Timeout as they attend to Horton. 28-20, Maryland the sideline limped off right there with the help of some of his teammates 
And Tyrone Anthony now back in at tailback. Of course, you hate to speculate, but the way he was helped off, Al, you would assume that it was either a knee or an ankle injury. And they're looking right now at his left knee and testing that. They're putting ice on it. And Tyrone Anthony, who was effective in the first half, has replaced him once again at the tailback position as the heels now are down inside the 20-yard line and knocking at the door for what might lead to be the tying touchdown, that assuming that they go for the two-point play and make it. Eddie Colson just picked up the first down. So it's first down from the 15-yard line, and it's Stan Cavage throwing complete again to the seven-yard line to Arnold Franklin. He stopped by Joe Krause. Two years ago, Stan Cavage won this game here with a touchdown pass to Anthony with a minute 20 to play in that game. Right now, clock running, under a minute to go. It's second down and two for the first and seven for the touchdown, and the pass is dropped by Anthony. And it's Krause again, number three, covering. So third down and two, 55 seconds to go in the game. We have seen a few of these passes today. Stan Cavage has thrown the ball accurately all afternoon, but look at that. Perfect uh, pitch right there to the flat. Stan Cavage now 19 of 34 for 211 yards and two touchdowns. Meanwhile, a critical play right now. Third down, a yard and a half for the first. And they're going to try to pick up the first with Anthony and do as he gets inside the four. You know what Carolina's doing here, too? And it's, it's working perfectly for them. They're taking enough time off the clock. They're right there to leave Maryland with no time at all if they score and convert and get their tie. And that's important, too. Sometimes if you go in too early, you leave the other guys enough time to get all the way back down the field for a field goal. Good point. First down, and they go into the end zone, and incomplete. It's broken up. By Clarence Baldwin, Earl Winfield was the intended receiver. Early report, Ethan Horton, ligament damage, left knee. Obviously, he will not be returning to the game. Stan Cavage with the quick passing game, aiming for Winfield, number 21. And there again, the coverage by number 23, Clarence Baldwin, who had a key interception earlier in the game. Second down, goal to go, ball at the four. 39 seconds to play. Carolina trailing by eight points as Tyrone Anthony takes it to the two. So it's third down and goal to go. Now they'll spend one of those timeouts. At this point, they do with 34 seconds for who? Well, for, for Chevy is, player. Anyway. Is that the, was that the boo of the week? Yeah, right. Anyway, they are our Chevrolet MVPs, and in their name, $1,000 to the General Scholarship Fund in the name of the player. There he is. Boomer, who can only watch now and hope that the defense can do it. Third down goal. Tar Heels from the three. Two, does he get to the one just about? He looks like he got to about the one foot line right there. My goodness, that's close. Almost got in. Almost got in. And he breaks the plane, of course, he is in. Meanwhile, it's going to be fourth down. So it comes down to this. Not only this, but even if they get in, of course, they have to do it again for two. two Stan, Stan Cavage sprinting out and looking to hit his quick passing game makes a decision to run the football, and right there, it looks momentarily like he might have gotten the ball to break the plane of the goal line, but it was Peter Koch and Tyrone Fulton. Furman, Tyrone Furman, who stopped him. So, fourth down. Goal. Final timeout being spent here. And UNC down by eight. About two feet. About two feet to go. And when you got a line that averages, what, 262 pounds, I think I, if I were a quarterback, I'd sneak right in behind those guys and go for it. Now, well, right now, they got to think about getting in for six, getting in for two more, and then uh, no matter what happens, well, especially if that happens, uh, young Mr. Barwick is going to think about that missed field goal a few moments ago, a few minutes ago anyway, in terms of the game clock. That could have made it 28 to 23. Instead, they're going for the tie, and they got to get it into the 
end zone consecutively. Fourth down and goal. Fitting climax to a great game. Anthony dives in for the touchdown. So Tyrone Anthony gets it, goes in behind everybody, and scores to make it 28 to 26 with 22 seconds remaining in the game. How many times have you seen an eye back take the ball and leap like this? We saw Herschel Walker do it many times, Sam Bam Cunningham. It's a great way to get into the end zone. And now WJZ TV, Channel 13, Baltimore type of a sprint out pass or some type of play action pass where Stan Cabbage can attack the corner and have the option of either throwing for it or running for it himself. Also, this is the type of time when you could take a timeout, but they don't have any remaining. Meanwhile, you do have the option where you'd like the ball spotted. And North Carolina has requested the ball to be spotted on the near hash mark. So the wide side of the field will be the right side. And you've got a right-handed passer who prefers to throw on the move running through his right. Think about that. So here's a conversion attempt. Rolls right, throws. The whole season in one play right here as Stan Cabbage sprints to his right. Now Anthony breaks open momentarily, and that ball is slightly overthrown, but it is catchable. And here is the reaction by Coach Crum right here, and you see the frustration right there. Oh my goodness. And then he sees everybody come out. Now the goalpost is already down, as you can see, or bent. Fans are on the field. It's a scene you see a lot, but the game's not over. You got 22 seconds remaining. And of course, what happens, it's a scene you see a lot. You see the fans come out, you hear the PA guy say, uh, will the fans please get off the field as if they're listening. Meanwhile, there'll be a penalty flag uh, drop for a delay of the game because of the crowd, if nothing else. And play will resume with North Carolina kicking off. Now, of course, you've got a lot of possibilities here. You've got the obvious possibility of an onside kick attempt. And Meanwhile, and part of the goalpost is gone as we look along the sidelines here and we see part of the goalpost being carried off. But that's foolishness on the part of the fans because the game indeed is not over and they are costing their team a penalty. Penalty, and what's going to happen one of these days is that uh, you're going to wind up taking a game away from the team. Or Under somebody... Circumstances, and that'll end all this nonsense. Or somebody will be seriously injured in attempting to get down a, a piece of, uh, of metal. Right. So, Maryland is on top by a score of... Tub Rogers will attempt what figures to be an onside squib kick coming up right here from the Maryland 45. It's got to go 10 yards, and... It looked like Carolina started. Did they recover? Yes. They got it. I didn't think it went 10 yards, but a Maryland man must have touched it, which makes it a free ball, and Carolina gets it. And now you've got an incredible situation. You've got Carolina. Now I think now they're saying the Maryland. Turks yep. have it. Yep. I didn't think it went 10 yards. Initially, I didn't either. the indication was there's also a penalty marker down at the 45 as well. Once they kicked off. Now they say Maryland's got it. Another look. We almost had the incredible possibility of a game-winning field goal and no goal post. There's the squibber. Now watch. Let's count the yards. There's six, seven, eight, nine. Now who touches it first? Now the Maryland player touches it. Now once, once the Maryland man touches it. It's a free ball. It's a free ball. Oh, boy, they'll talk about that one for a while. Meanwhile, Esiason just is going to fall down with it. There's no question about that. 
Kelly Hayes, George Hill, great job guys up in the booth today. It's been a game they'll talk about for a long time, especially that, that call on the onside kick at the very end as well. Now the crowd comes out. Clock just ticking down. There's no way it can be stopped. Esiason would love to spend a private moment right now. As he said yesterday, just looking around the stadium and enjoying it. Meanwhile, he's in the middle of a mob scene. It's another story for Stan Cavage in North Carolina, but it was a great game. Maryland wins it by a score of 28 to 26. One more look now at a very controversial call at the end of the game. A call that initially went to North Carolina and was changed. They will be talking about this for years and running this back. Watch as the ball comes close to that 10-yard level. Six, seven, eight, nine. Now watch as the ball is touched by a Maryland player at nine and a half yards at Carolina's number 80. No, it's Sadler who touches it first, and but we can't see. Yes, it is. It's Bob Rogers who falls on it for North Carolina. Here it is again. Count them. Count the yards. See the cut? It was touched right there. Very, very controversial call, but a great game. Game of the year of the ACC. So it's over in College Park, and it was one to remember. As Maryland defeats North Carolina, final score, Terrapins 28, Tar Heels 26, we'll be back. No score in a wild one was Maryland 28, North Carolina 26. Travel arrangements made through in a promotion.